Okay. I'll call the meeting to order at 631. So as the first order of business, is there anybody here for public input for something that's not on the agenda tonight? Okay, hearing none. We have no student report tonight. And so I think we'll just jump ahead so we don't have to keep all of our guests <laughs> waiting. They serve this community long enough, they don't have to stay longer. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so Julie Kopke, who's here tonight, was uh, the one that came up with the idea last summer about trying to recognize the people that put so much time into the school and you know give a little bit of public acknowledgement so you know we thank her for that idea and I think we all 100% support that so we're glad that people are here tonight I'm gonna turn it over to mr. Bernard to say a few words if he will about the people here that are uh, have given some so much time to us mr. chairman thank you very much so the folks we have here tonight uh, to be honored for their um, service to North Reading total 100.5 years of service, 100 and a half years. So that's, that's really, that's tremendous. And, and before I speak a little bit about each uh, one of them, um, we did, unfortunately, we had um, two staff who were not able to be here um, this evening. Um, Linda Pescioni is retiring from the math department at the middle school uh, tomorrow, and Laurie McBride, a kindergarten teacher at the little school, also um, was not able to be here. And lastly, Paula Bugley, a special education paraprofessional at the middle school. I will be going to the middle school's reception tomorrow to um, present both Linda and Paula a gift on behalf of the committee. And we certainly wish them well. So I thought um, just by way of introduction to, um, to the five people who are here this evening, I would start with um, the fewest years of service and go up to the, the most years of service. So. Uh, Helena Meyer uh, is first with 10 years of service at our middle school. I actually, um, I think, made contact, you made contact with me, Helena, back when I was the high school principal and I recommended you to John Fauché for a, for a position at the middle school. We have a, Helena and I have a mutual friend and she's done a very, very nice job at our middle school um, teaching as a, as a reading specialist and an English language arts teacher. Uh, prior to coming to North Reading, um, Helena had worked also in the Wakefield and Linfield Public Schools and she told me just tonight that she was a member of the Linfield School Committee many years ago. So um, very, a very nice person, a very talented teacher. We're going to miss you, Helena. We will have a gift to present uh, on behalf of the committee to each of you, but it, maybe I'll go through each person first and we'll maybe take a photo for the paper as well. Uh, next up with 18 years of service is Jane Whitney, retiring from the high school in the special education department. Jane was one of the first people I met when I came to North Reading as the high school principal, and I remember you helped transition a new teacher in uh, at my request that we, we were expanding our special education department at the high school from one teacher to two. It's hard, it's hard to believe in 2003 that's what the special <laughs> education staff made up. But um, uh, a graduate of North Reading High School and having worked uh, in the special education department since 2000, uh, Jane, you're going to be missed having, having been a very talented person working in our alternative education center, the learning center, very supportive of children. I want to thank you. Very, it's been a pleasure working with you, so thank you. And just slightly ahead of Jane, someone I also came to, to get to know uh, very well working at the high school with 18 and a half years is Karen Adams, who retired uh, mid-year this year um, after 18 and a half years of service as the nurse at the high school. Karen, I'm glad you were able to come back tonight. I know you've been retired for a few months. It was nice for you to make time, so thank you for that. Uh, and next uh, is Eric Foreman with 19 years. Eric has had a perennial smile now for about what? Probably about, about six months anyway, right? And has gone through many testimonials in the last few months from his music boosters and <coughs> band students. And, you know, it's funny when you, as long as I've worked with Eric, uh, I learned something about him when we held his retirement party. And we learned, I learned that Eric was an avid bowler. Mr. Webster was there. And I had never knew that about you, Eric, all these years. And... Um, I think most everyone knows that uh, Robin, Eric's wife, also works for the school department as a secretary in the athletic office, and she's promised me she's not retiring. I was going to say, Dave, Dave Johnson soon. today asked me to assure that she yes. will be leaving. I have it in writing, Mr. Just Webster. checking on that. She's okay. not going here. So, Eric, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations to you, Eric. Thank you very, very much. 
And let's see, lastly, with 35 years of service, all in North Reading, Joanne, correct? Wow, 35 years of service to the North Reading Public Schools. Joanne Coughlin was first hired as an elementary music teacher in 1983. I don't want to make you feel bad, Joanne, but I graduated high school in 82. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She's worked at the Batchelder, the Little and the Hood schools, um, got certified in instructional technology in the early 2000s, taught music from 2001 to 2002 at the middle school, became a computer teacher at the middle school in September of 20, 2004, and has since that time been a technology integration specialist and lastly as a digital learning specialist and has really been uh, one of those cogs in the wheel of moving digital learning in this district uh, pretty, pretty speedily and uh, with great advancement the last few years. So Joanne, it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you very much. So continuing with a tradition, this is a little bit of a new thing uh, tonight where we are, um, have invited you all to the school committee to be recognized. <clears throat> but something that is not new, and we're continuing with, with the tradition, is um, placing a book in a school library that you've chosen. And what I uh, did at the last meeting when we honored the elementary people that were retiring is I shared with, with uh, the community and those in attendance at this meeting um, a little bit about why you selected the book that you did. So Eric, I think, Yours is on top here, so um, just for your benefit, what, what Ann Lundell, my administrative assistant, has done is created a nice um, inscription, and this is on the book now, and it will go in the high school library for anyone that comes in to, to take the book out will know that it was dedicated in your honor, Eric, and you're certainly welcome to take, take a look at this. And we ask people um, why it is that they selected the book that they have selected, why it's one of their favorites. And what Eric wrote about this book entitled Findings by Leonard Bernstein, is, uh, it, is a, it is a self-portrait that collects private notes, letters, essays, and musical writings to convey the incredible energy, talent, and genius of a man who has confirmed that maturity and originality of American music. Very nice, Eric. Thank you so much. And then next is um, the book that Joanne Coughlin has selected. It's probably one that a lot of us know. I know why the caged bird sings, Maya Angelou. And what Joanne wrote about why this book is her favorite is that Maya Angelou is her hero. This memoir is a testament to her spirit, humor, and courage to survive and rise above personal and cultural adversity. Angelou's humble, turbulent childhood and her rise as an internationally renowned writer and political activist is proof that anything is possible. And this will go in the high school library at your request, Joanne. And again, you have also the kind of little inscription that Anne does a nice job with, so thank you. And next we have uh, the book that Helena Meyer selected. Helena, um, the book is Fish in a Tree by Linda Mullaly Hunt. And why it is one of Helena's favorites is she writes that she enjoyed this book because she found it to be inspirational and a feel-good book that offers encouragement to students who struggle academically and demonstrates that, quote, a disability does not equal stupidity. It is a story of friendship and sensitivity and she um, we has asked that this book be placed in the library at the middle school. So, Elena, thank you very much. Karen Adams. Again. Karen Adams, RN. The Help. It was also made into a movie, right? Yeah. It was made into a movie, I think, too, not yes. that long ago, The yeah, Help. Yeah. Catherine Stockett. And what, what uh, Karen wrote about why this book is one of her uh, favorites is she found the book to be fascinating. It spoke of black maids in the 1960s in white southern homes. It spoke of strong bonds and friendships that formed no matter what color one's skin is. So this will be at your request, Karen, placed in the high school library. Thank you. And lastly, this was an interesting choice, Jane. I love, I love this. <coughs> Les Miserables, Victor Hugo. <laughs> A wonderful story about integrity in the face of oppression and, of course, love and faithfulness. So this will be going in the, in the high school library. So you, you're all, you know, if you want to take a look, you're welcome to do that. So thank you all very much. And I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, at this time, um, we have a committee for each of our retirees, with the exception of Karen, who um, got her gift when she retired mid-year, and, and I presented her gift um, at that time. So John, uh, if you want to... Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to say... Um, Again, thank Julie for coming up with this idea because it was nice to honor the elementary um, staff last week and then middle and high school this week. And the thing that um, has impressed me the most is the um, 
little stories they wrote to accompany the books that they donated. Um, all, I don't know how many we had last week, but every single one of them was touching and personal. And um, I think that sums up this school district. Do you want one by one come down, or do you want to? We can have them all come down. Yeah, we can. Everybody come down. Yeah. Why don't everybody just come down together? Four of you. Karen, you should come too. 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 Karen, you Sorry, my kids don't know about any of Thank you very much. Thank you. Jean's sister, right? Congratulations. Thank you. I'm your Julie sister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, none of my kids got any of you in middle and high schools. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Give you a better hug. Thank you. Yeah, take this. Take this. Thank you. Big time. I know. My oldest is going into fourth, so a couple, couple years away still. <laughs> West Coast, right? Yeah. Thank you. For you. Good for you. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> and we got to get a group shot with everybody. The other thing I wanted to add, John. John. So Into the mic. I appreciate it. Thank you. No, I. I have to oh, yeah. Patrick Arelli. He won't believe it. <laughs> John, I, I, will, I will. I just wanted yeah. to add the one. No problem. Congratulations. One thing that. Um, yeah, no problem. Thank you. All the teachers are great. Everybody, I think they've contributed to make this a, a, just a, a wonderful school system. But one thing that um, I loved about one of the stories tonight is how um, Joanne Coughlin transformed herself. And you know, you read a lot about, oh, those older teachers, they don't want to know anything about technology. I'm not saying you're old, I said older teachers. You heard what I said? <laughs> and the way, the way Joanne embraced technology and became a leader in this district in the implementation of technology, I, I just found that a, a, a fascinating story. Not that everybody's story isn't fascinating, but I, I just thought the way Joanne kind of Took the lead on yeah. that. She was one of the, our first technology people. She if absolutely I recall correctly. is. Absolutely. So, yeah. Just want to mention you. that. Nice. She <laughs> so, how do we want to take my this? Phone number now. You know, <laughs> if you want to, do you want to? I think the committee might like to have a picture right here. Right. Jill, so, does this work for you? Right. Okay. How are we going to get us all in? Well, Big group. <laughs> Should the committee be in the back? <laughs> Maybe you guys can step up before we do Yeah, you don't know where to look. Joanne's at around the graduation. 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 Joanne's Okay. If Jerry was here, he'd ask them why they're not staying for the meeting. You know? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Said you do you have one more day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eric, don't forget. <laughs> Set that alarm one more time. One more, one one more time. time. We well, see each you're... other just about every morning on Main Street. So yeah. One more, one more time. And if they've done 105, 100 100 years together, I, I think. If I did the math right, yeah. It was 100.5. Okay. So... To, figure, to finish up with our guests, you want to let's go in the order of the new business and uh, maybe perhaps uh, Dr. O'Connell. Are you going to present about the new club proposal, the North Reading Middle School Gay Straight Alliance? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Hi. 
So I, I would like to ask your consideration for a new club at the middle school. I, it came as a proposal to me from two teachers, Lacey LaHaye, an eighth grade foreign language teacher, and Terry House, a seventh grade English language arts teacher, to form a gay straight alliance club at the middle school. There has been one in, in long standing at the high school, and they would like to see one at the middle school. Just as a point um, for your consideration, I think many of you know I was a prior administrator in Reading at a middle school, and we did have a Gay Straight Alliance Club at Parker Middle School when I was there back as early as 2010. So I do believe this is something that middle schools do offer, and I would l certainly take any questions, but would like your consideration for starting this club in the fall. Can I have a question? Sure. I understand that there's some of the middle school students that currently take part in a club or other activities associated at the high school. Has any sixth grader shown interest in this type of club versus seventh or eighth? I was not aware that seventh or eighth grade students, Mr. LaPrette, are participating in the Gay Straight Alliance at the high school. I'm not sure if it's the alliance or activities or something of that nature that they, <coughs> not at all. I'm sorry, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, okay. I'm not yeah. aware. They don't? <coughs> okay, I just heard that from some of the students. Yeah, I'm. About that. Most of our clubs, if not all of our clubs, are very separate. Mm. Okay, gotcha. For developmental reasons. I think the one thing do we do we do any interchange in the um, what's the community the interact interact club? We, does, does the middle school interact with the high school interact at all? No, ours is called early act. Yeah, and I was wondering if that yeah. might be where there was some interaction. No, okay. but I know that our club that club was based on right. The interact club, the early right. club at the middle school. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, mean, I think I think in a vacuum, there might be questions from some people in the public. But I thought you did a really good job in going over the potential offerings and exactly what the club would be getting into. And I found that really useful, just because, again, I mean, I think anything concerning sexuality could potentially be, you know, questionable by some people. But I think it was really good going through the potential offerings about you know, very concrete what we're going to be doing with the, with the club, and so it, I support it. And I think the, the questions are more so <coughs> around the, the entry age of sixth mm -hmm. grade versus seventh and eighth, I think absolutely valid. I think it's more the sixth graders, you know, maybe going through the year of sexual education first and mm -hmm. understanding that first um, was the only thing that I think might surface, you know, let kids be kids as long as they can be right. kids. Um, so that's the only thing that arises for me is more that, you know, 12 year old age um, versus seventh grade. It, historically, the only club at the middle school that we limited in terms of grade level was peer leaders. And it had only been at one point for eighth graders only. And then we said, well, we'll let seventh grade. And now we let sixth and seventh and eighth grade. But I'm open to, you know, the recommendations of the committee for the grade levels. That's why it has <coughs> many sixth grade students in particular, because if there was a need for a sixth grade student, I'd say absolutely, yeah. you'd want that person to have that support. Uh, um, so it, it seems to me this is a, it'll be a self-selecting group that, that wants to participate, and it may certainly be true that uh, um, more seventh and eighth graders are feel ready to participate in that kind of activity, but I think if a sixth grader does feel that strongly and is ready to make that commitment, I, I certainly wouldn't think they should sixth graders that don't understand sexuality and those things yet it will bring a lot of questions home mm -hmm. to parents so that's the only thing but I believe when I looked at Linfield their seventh and eighth grade participate but it's different because they have a fifth grade I believe in their middle school at the middle period. school yeah so that makes a little bit more yeah sense. so I totally understand yeah. not limiting it that's the only thing that I'm speaking you know on behalf of just what I think may surface I, could pre I appreciate that. Has there been any uh, movement from the students for this? Not this year. There was last year, not this year. That was a question that I did ask Ms. LaHaye and Ms. House, have students come to you this year to ask you for this? And they said that they had not, but the, the year prior, there was a group of students who did. And I, I would like to think that <clears throat> at its core, the group would be focused on acceptance and diversity and welcoming and our mantra always is kindness and so I would I realize there's the sexual component but I would like it, the emphasis to be more on welcoming and acceptance this seems to me to be well in line with the whole development of social emotional learning also in the school so it's something I would certainly support 
Any other comments or questions? If none, can I have a vote to approve this club? I will make a motion to approve the North Reading Middle School Gay Straight Alliance. Second. Uh, one, one question. What's, what's the, um, John, what is the um, stipend for the first two years? So it, it'll be new under right. a new um, contract, and I believe it's seven hundred and fifty dollars for. Um, okay, I thought it was seven hundred or seven hundred fifty. <coughs> is it seven? Yeah. Okay. And that's a two-year pilot. Correct. Yeah. Two, two-year pilot process. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and then moving on to the improvement plans. Are the middle or middle school going to go first? If, if that's okay with the committee, with the chairman. That is great. <coughs> Let's move up. Yeah. So just to acknowledge the members this year, the two teacher representatives, actually one of them was just here. I, I should have acknowledged her. Jean Walsh is a reading teacher. She was here supporting Helena Meyer one of her colleagues. Jean Walsh and Carla Lister were the two teacher representatives. Amy Luckowitz, a familiar name to the, to the group. It was the community representative. This is her second year in that role. And the two parent representatives were Sandy Garnis, a, current, a parent of a current seventh grader, soon to be eighth grader, and Heather McLeod, a parent of a current sixth grader, soon to be seventh grader. And they were very helpful uh, over the course of the year <coughs> in the development of this new plan and the implementation of the previous year's plan. So I like to just highlight a few things from this past year based on the school improvement plan from the year prior. We implemented year three of the Massachusetts tiered system of support. That's an intervention program that we focused on math, reading, science, executive functioning, and study skills. So once a week, students were placed into these interventions for nine or 10 sessions, and then we reassessed and determined where, where if any, um, place that they still needed intervention. So again, this is the third year that we've been doing this. We've seen success. Uh, now, if you recall, last year you asked for consideration of extending for students who are already um, you know, at grade level or beyond grade level. So we did this year pilot in science, a in, an intervention session for students who were performing above grade level to really try to challenge them and expose them to standards that weren't covered in the regular science classroom. We also conducted and continue to use the iReady diagnostic test for math and reading. I'm sure the committee is aware that's an adaptive online test that is very accurate and determined determining children's uh, math and reading levels. They'll give you ac an actual grade level broken down into very specific domains and standards that the students would uh, benefit from further review on. Additionally, we implemented year two of a positive behavior intervention and support framework. And really what that's all about is, is telling kids up front what you want them to do, what you expect them to do in terms of behavior and then rewarding them for showing exemplary behavior. We implemented as part of the PBIS framework monthly care days, and those are social emotional learning days that we, a group of teachers and students from the peer leaders uh, group plan to really f focus and dial in on its social emotional learning. And we included, a, for the second year in a row, a mindfulness component into that, just a basic relaxation stress reduction um, mindfulness for all the students. We actually also had this year drop-in mindfulness sessions for staff on Thursday mornings and they were very well received. There were a few times during MCAS when I actually wasn't able to facilitate the drop-in sessions and teachers actually did it on their own, which, which was great. And then I kind of just put together in the fourth bullet some of the big highlights from the student activities. Once on this island was our musical this year. It was amazing. Uh, we just uh, found out that Two of our students won awards from the, the group that, um, middle school group that gives away the drama awards. Uh, we had our winter and spring concerts. Sad to see Mr. Foreman at his last concert uh, um, earlier in this month. Our March Madness basketball tournament, we do that with their students play each other and, and uh, compete during the time of the co collegiate 
Ma uh, March Madness tournament, and then whoever wins that tournament plays the faculty. So just a few weeks ago, it was really fun. We had a faculty versus student basketball game, and for the first time in several years, the seventh graders beat us. I have a big bruise on my knee, uh, to <laughs> but I did score a point, so <laughs> that's good. But the seventh grade students beat us, but it was really fun. We also have an uh, old school geography bee. <coughs> Our students actually presented to the school committee back in um, March, whenever our presentation was, actually I think it was May, um, <coughs> Geography B um, that we had back in January, and a History B. Students actually, for the History B, travel down to, I think, Atlanta to compete um, nationally in the History B. We just w finished our Washington, D.C. trip. Over 160 students attended that trip. They had a great time. It was um, wonderful weather, not too hot, and everyone came back just in really enjoying the opportunity to visit, visit our nation's capital. Field Day and Legacy Day were just this past week. The Legacy Day is our version of a graduation for the eighth grade students. It's really a day focused on their time at the middle school and talking to them about their legacy and what they will be leaving behind. We also had Science Olympiad this year run by Mrs. Wall, a, a science teacher, and we came in 10th out of, I think, 30 middle schools who participated, so that we did a great job. That's a really rigorous um, science competition that students plan for over the course of many, many, many months. And then Project 351 uh, we, was also presented to you um, last month with Tyler Craig uh, acting as our student ambassador to the, um, for the uh, group of eighth grade students who went to the to into Boston for the day for a leadership conference. Additionally, we had a book study group. A mind, uh, we read Mindful Teacher, Mindful School, and that was actually it was facilitated by myself. But all five schools participated. There was representation from all five schools. We met monthly, read the book, and practiced mindfulness as a group. And then one of the things I really am super proud of is the one to one Chromebook pilot in the seventh grade this year that I think was absolutely a success. This was the first year that students took the devices home. We issued them in August, and they, they starting in the first day of school, they brought them to school, brought them home, used them during the day in school, used them at home for homework. Really, I, it was tremendous, and I owe a lot to the uh, tech department, Joanne Coughlin being here earlier, but uh, Dan Downs, the director of digital learning, did a great job helping to support the teachers and helping to s support administration in this um, initiative. And I think what's most important to just remember about the, the initiative is that it wasn't about just replacing, using a Chromebook to replace pen and paper. It wasn't about you know just word processing. It was about really shifting the way that teachers are instructing and to use technology and integrate technology in a meaningful way, and I think just 100% it was successful and we are lucky enough to have the support from the town and the support from uh, the, the district to again give out Chromebooks to the new seventh graders starting in um, August to use at the first day of school. So these are just highlights from this past year and then into the goals that I'm proposing. I base the goals on NRPS 2021, the, the big headings, the big umbrella titles, so teaching and learning being the first one. A lot of focus still on our MCAS scores, as the committee knows that we are working hard to bring those scores up. So the first proposal is to increase the student growth, growth percentile in ELA in two of the three grades based on the uh, spring data that I hope to have in early July. I hope to have access to that data to begin looking at it and, and conducting analysis. Same thing with uh, goal number two, but that's focused on eighth grade. The reason that we do not use student growth percentile is they don't issue that for science because they only take, they take science in fifth grade and then again in eighth grade. So we just obviously want to keep the improvement, focus on improvement. So we would want to see the aggregate improve from the 2018 results, which again, I hope to have very soon. And continuing to math. So ELA, math, and science would be our big focus from for the uh, standardized testing perspective. And then the fourth goal under the teaching and learning umbrella is to improve the climate levels at the middle school, as reported by students and staff. So for the past two years, we've collected data from students and staff in June 
just about overall how they how they feel about the middle school, what their experience is in terms of physical safety, emotional safety, feeling as they as though they are supported. And we gave a similar uh, survey just recently, so I haven't yet analyzed those results. But we're going to you know keep looking to improve the way that students and staff feel about being at the school and how they uh, overall rate their experience. I think that's super important. And as I've shared on numerous occasions, there are there's a lot of research that suggests when students feel good about being here and feel supported, and just as importantly, when staff feels good about being here and supported every day, learning is going to I increase, as is attendance, behavior, et cetera. So that's a really important goal to me personally that we will continue to try to improve. And then the technology integration, I think I've already touched on that a little bit in the first goal, that we'll, we will follow to the best of our ability the district's plan, the district's um, technology plan to make technology integral to curriculum instruction and assessment. I think the committee knows that this year the middle school took all of their MCAS using Chromebooks. It was you know, mandated by the state that 7th and 8th grade do that. We decided to go ahead and have 6th grade do it as well. And that, in fact, in 2019, all grades will need to, at the middle school, be using the Chromebooks. So we wanted to get ahead of it a little bit. But again, just one more time, a shout out to the digital learning team. They really have been super supportive to the middle school staff and administration in implementing the technology plan. Goal number two I'm very excited about. I'm going to be working very closely with uh, Assistant Superintendent Daly and an outside consultant who's an expert with Google Studio. I'm not super familiar with Google Studio, but it's a Google platform for, da for data management. And right now, if I want to look at a student's profile and I want to look at their grades, their MCAS, their attendance, their behavior, I have to go to many different databases. And what Google Studio will do is hopefully pull all of that information from the uh, from the outside uh, places and put it into one place, and then we can you know update it live and look at it live and really make better informed da data driven decisions. So we're meeting <coughs> in early July with that outside consultant and Dr. Daly to to begin talking about how the middle school might be able to pilot using that tool. So I'm I'm super excited about that goal. And then the last area are our student support services. And again, as I mentioned in the highlights, we will continue to implement the Massachusetts tiered system of support. <coughs> again, that, that's a, 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 um, a group of intervention sessions that are designed to help students who are performing below, gro below grade level. But again, this year we did try to pilot for students who are performing above grade level, what can we do for them to really push them and challenge them. And then goal number two is something that we began to talk about this year, but I would like to talk about more next year with the school council and my faculty. You probably don't know this because this is the inner daily workings of the middle school, but currently and for the past many years since I've been here and I'm completing my seventh year, our middle school, each grade level has its own schedule. So say, for example, at the high school, they operate on the green gold schedule, the 78 minute blocks, and everybody's on the same time frame not at the middle school. There's, th there's three different schedules. And the reason for that in part is because eighth grade has five core academic subjects because they begin to take full-time foreign language. Sixth and seventh grade do not have that fifth subject. So by default, their academic blocks are longer because we're dividing by four and not five. And so we're just trying to think creatively, talk to other schools, just see what, what can be done to maybe improve our, our daily operational schedule so that it's not quite um, so um, just, uh, I guess, uh, difficult to um, follow in terms of trying to share staff, trying to um, you know, provide services to students. It's challenging when all three grades are operating at a different schedule, operating on a different schedule. And then the last goal, something that we've worked really hard on uh, in the last few years, is to build in-district programming at the middle school to meet the needs of all of our students. So this will be coming up in September, the third year of the RISE program that we you know, have put together and, and built with a BCBA to provide uh, supports to our students who require uh, that type of program. We also have several other substantially separate programs at the middle school, and we're working closely with 
uh, Cynthia Conant, the Director of Pupil Services, and Maureen Ryan, the Secondary Coordinator of, of Pupil Personnel Services, to really look at those programs. We hope to have, and I think I included it in my plan, to have a consultant come out and evaluate our programs. It's very healthy and, and helpful to periodically have an evaluation of any of your programs that you're running, and having an outside person do that is, is helpful in terms of them being neutral and knowing uh, best practices in, in the area for these types of programs. So we're going to continue to look at our programs and, and tweak them and adjust them, but the focus is always meeting the needs of the students who are, who are uh, entering our school. Spent a lot of time already this year ensuring that the grade five to six transition is, in, is as seamless as possible, especially for students who of individual education plans or 504 plans. I think that's it for the middle school. So that's all uh, obviously in the school, the school improvement plan that I believe you have. I'm not sure if there are any questions. Thank you. I tried to be brief. Questions, comments? Kathy, can you give me an example uh, talking about student support services goal number two, talking about the schedule. The schedule, we seem to have, we've, we've done a lot of work on that. I know. Um, what are some of the negative impacts that you see of the schedule as it currently exists? Well, I know that this isn't student-centered, but one of the, the most challenging um, areas is staffing, right? So if, if I want to share staff or I have a, you know, a really good speech and language pathologist, which I happen to have, uh, <coughs> she's outstanding, it's very difficult for her to service all three grades when they're operating at different times, and she would be more efficient and able to service more students if everybody was on the same schedule. And that doesn't sound student-centered, but indirectly it affects students. So that's, that's one example. Um, being able to share other um, support staff like paraprofessionals. So right now, if someone had you know, an opportunity to help out in the eighth grade, they have, and they work in the sixth grade, they would have to look at their schedule to see when the eighth grade block is that needs, you know, um, support and see when their sixth grade block ends because they're all within five or ten minutes of each other starting and ending throughout the course of the day. So it's almost like running three different uh, schools in some sense. It, it is, yeah. Three and groups of, of professionals uh, serving the school. Right. Because there's just, it's harder to do cross. For, for it is. For the faculty to do across the different groups. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And, and and I think in addition to that, I think that was one of the uh, one of the things that I I noticed was you have the youngest grades having the longest classes as well by having it divided by four, and so you have a sixth grader going in and they have very long classes. They do. They're I, about an hour. Yeah. I mean, I can't keep my attention for yeah. an hour in most right. most situations. So, <coughs> I mean, I, I would encourage you to do that, and I imagine this probably smarter people than me they can figure out how to do that yeah well the school council has told me that they're you know they will support me next year and really looking at other schools in the area that have different schedules it's just uh, just looking at what might work um, but really at the end of the day it's going to come down to finding a fifth class for the sixth and seventh grade and what we can do with them during that time so that th it's meaningful and and you know academic well, I mean I wonder if you could even rotate some of the classes and have you know, two sections, one right. week of some class as opposed right. we to... Talked, we talked about that. Yeah. Foreign language has been something that we've talked about since I've been here as a fifth class in the seventh grade, but it just hasn't happened yet. Maybe someday. Yeah. And then my only other question was just, we've heard from digital learning a little bit about the one-to-one, -one, but from your perspective, I mean, how, how's the one-to-one -one going and are there any issues? I mean, are the techn technologically, I mean, are, there, are the Chromebooks holding up well? I mean, are the... Have the students really has it become second nature to them? Yeah, the students have been fantastic. So having been a middle school um, administrator for ten years, I was worried about uh, you know twelve year olds bringing this device back and forth and charging it faithfully every night. But we held firm to I know this may sound cruel, but we weren't going to just loan them out every day to kids who forgot them because we wanted the, the expectation to be you need to bring it and you need to bring it charged. And the kids did a fantastic job, and I would say, in large part, to their parents, helping them and reminding them. And th you know, this is like a textbook or a binder. So we really had zero problems with kids bringing them to school fully charged. There were a few minor, and the tech department could tell you, but a very small percentage of actual technical problems. 
but we were able to have loaner devices on hand. So if, if a child's Chromebook stopped working and needed to be sent out, we they would get a loaner, and within a week or so, you know, hopefully it would be fixed and and returned. So those those kind of operational problems were non-existent, and and like I said, I was really wanting to see that shift in the in the way that the teachers were thinking about using technology and i think that that they've really embraced that and done a, a re really nice job yeah. and were the w with the mcas testing with all three grades doing it was there were there any technical issues that came from a few or? minor yeah <laughs> a few minor technical issues and i should absolutely give a, a shout out to my assistant principal mike maloney because he took a real lead on helping um with you know co-facilitating with the tech department the implementation of the online MCAS. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I mean, I think the one thing I just, I, I always want to applaud you for is I think you are very good as an administrator of seeing the kid as a whole student, yeah. not just looking at the academics, not just looking at the test scores, but, you know, I think you've been a leader in this, in North Reading about trying to think about, you know, social emotional issues and I, I just think. what my dissertation was on. <laughs> um, I think there's a question in the audience yeah. too. <laughs> Just a question as far as um, did you experience any difficulties with Wi-Fi at home? A, a few parents, but I would say you know a handful of parents you know uh, talked to us at the beginning of the year about more about filters and things that they wanted to be able to provide up above and beyond what the school was already providing but not from a socioeconomic perspective where parents said you know we, we don't have we, we, yeah we yeah great if there's nothing else perhaps we can do a motion to accept the uh Actually, middle school before we before yeah, we do i just want one more quick comment uh the members of the committee will come to know if they don't already that I'm particularly fond of, of school councils, having served on three of them here. And uh, I, I, I just want to use this opportunity as a way to acknowledge especially uh, the, the, the teachers and the parents and the, stu and the community representatives who participate in these councils. Uh, th it's really fa fun, interesting work and, and uh, uh, Kathy and AJ and, and I was on the bachelor councils as well. Th they all use them in different ways. Uh, Above and beyond the present, the pr preparation of the school improvement plan, and and I just you know, I, I think they're really important, and uh, I want to make that comment. So, excellent. Yeah. Okay. Having that, can we have a motion to accept the middle school improvement plan? Sure. I will make a motion to accept. Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, Dr. O'Connell. Thank you. Okay. Moving on, Mr. LaPratt. Okay, very good. Thank you. <clears throat> so we, um, at the high school, have a, have a larger group. Um, and here, is, uh, here are the names of the representatives. Excuse me. On the uh, high school... Um, School council, um, student reps, teacher reps, um, community representative as well, and uh, Michael Walborn. Um, again, um, Mr. McGowan served on our uh, school council this year. Very uh, nice to have him and his uh, contributions. So moving into the highlights from the uh, current school year, the 17-18 school year. Um, I'll try to give these, I think, they're, they're due attention, but there are a number of them. So uh, obviously, uh, the curriculum, ongoing curriculum work with uh, a focus on common assessment strategies across all departments, that work continues. We have our Parents Association, very um, committed group. Uh, we were able to have a number of speakers come in. Ed Garrity, who speaks to our freshman class, Early on in the year, Cara Filler, who did a, a wonderful presentation on decision making, and then Kevin Lau, you might recall, uh, presented in the gymnasium and talked about overcoming uh, obstacles and embracing uh, really the difficulties that define who you are. Everybody, everyone's got some, um, and it's how you approach the things that uh, might be challenging you that really define you, and he gave a, a tremendous presentation. Um, 
We continue with our freshman, freshman advisory program and you know, the, the, uh, the wonderful relationship that exists between our SLAM mentors, our junior and senior SLAM mentors and their mentees as incoming freshmen, helping to uh, really focus on that transition, making sure it's a smooth one for freshman students. Um, it's nice to see that happen every year when you think of the, about the students that, that participate in SLAM and you know, their commitment to that organization. Uh, and certainly it starts with the advisors that, uh, that lead that group, but the kids really um, make it something personal for themselves and obviously focused on the, the, the mentor. The commitment is tremendous. Uh, we're continuing with our stress less group. Uh, again, with stress reduction and mindfulness, uh, that, um, that group did incorporate some new strategies this year, so that's nice to see. Um, the change team is in its third year uh, this year, and that's a, uh, a tech, kind of a tech support group. Uh, we had two international uh, travel opportunities. Students went to China and Quebec. Um, moving on, uh, this is a nice, a real nice feather in the cap. The fourth straight Highland Trophy uh, just announced uh, the other day, um, and this is from the uh, Cape Ann League. So, a, a, the recognition of the um, kind of confluence of win-loss percentage against Cape Ann uh, rivals, academic uh, GPA scores, and recognition for sportsmanship. And this is the fourth straight year that North Reading High School has been awarded the Highland Trophy, uh, something that I think I'm, I'm very proud of. I know our athletic department is very proud of. I think beyond the athletic department, the academic teachers um, as GPA is a component. Um, and that was, uh, we just had a nice photo opportunity uh, today. Other athletic uh, accomplishments, a Division III uh, championship for our uh, female uh, track team. And keeping in mind, of course, that uh, they won it in Division IV last year, so we're challenged to move up a division and said, okay, we'll show you, we'll just win it again at Division III. So uh, you gotta love that spirit. Division II North Champs in varsity softball, a great run by that team, 23 and one final record. The only loss coming in the, uh, the uh, Eastern Mass semifinal. Two Greater New Bedford that went on to win it. Um, kind of shifting away from, from athletics and moving back to academics, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of frame this a little bit. So our advanced placement program remains strong. So if you think about around 800 kids and times uh, eight classes, so how many sections that is, 13% of every student sitting in a class is taking an academic, I'm sorry, an advanced placement class. And that is a number that has stayed strong, I think regardless of cohort, which is something that I think is, is indicative of, again, the willingness of our students to embrace a rigorous <coughs> academic course load. Um, that that number, you know, while it could fluctuate, and I don't want to challenge myself this year, um, really is a, is a tremendous uh, statistic that consistently students wanting to challenge themselves and take a, rig a rigorous course load. And that of course is, of course, with open enrollment. So there's no restrictions other than course prereqs that would prevent a student from taking an, uh, an advanced placement class. Um, we had a, a, a new uh, club this year, the uh, Students for Soldiers Club. That was a year one pilot. Um, our student council, uh, another uh, tremendous year, gold rated uh, book of excellence. And you may recall that the superintendent was awarded a special award by the uh, Mass State of Student Councils. We had the Seal of Bioliteracy Initiative um, and we'll hear more about that in a couple of minutes. Um, we had six students awarded um, by the writing club of 40, over 4,500 entries in the Commonwealth, and their stories were uh, publicized, or public, uh, blah. <laughs> um, they were uh, published in the Spine Chillers Tales from the Bay State. Uh, so another nice uh, recognition for those students. And again, our maskers in our notorious group uh, just consistently 
performing at such a high level um, when they make the trip into Boston and you're kind of there on, uh, on Stewart Street into the, um, that Hancock Theater. It's, uh, it is tremendous to see them kind of consistently uh, perform at such a, such a high level. With, in, in the, uh, the competition is very, very strong in, in, the, um, in the arts in those areas, so it's just a tremendous group. These are, again, some of the highlights from the past year. Looking ahead to 1819, wonderfully, uh, wonderful good news that we are adding another school psychologist to our student support area. Uh, being a, a huge benefit to counseling, testing, and other student wellness areas. We continue to uh, look uh, at uh, potential candidates and higher candidates for special ed positions that have dual certification, uh, not only in special ed, but in a core subject area. Looking at a new course on in 18-19, Robotics Academy 2. Um, we are continuing with our common application boot camp that is already getting enrollees for the August 14 and 16 um, seminar. Our bridge program continues next year, uh, coming up in 18-19. It'll be in its third year. We are still working with the Bright Organization, and if you may recall, the bridge program is that kind of temporary transitional program to help students transition back into the classroom if they've had extended absences for any number of reasons. Uh, that program remains strong, and we're looking to um, add a little bit more support to that. Uh, it, is, it is really vital um, when we look at how it impacts students and their ability to uh, succeed in the classroom, getting back in a very difficult, or coming back from a very difficult transition. And, you know, an initiative that I think um, I uh, really enjoy uh, hearing from students that have participated in the internship program and the value that they get out of that um, as much as we focus on the educational experience in the school and as much as we value that there is um, really this uh, this other piece of it when we can get a student in an opportunity to get in the industry or to get in the workplace directly and have that that experience that we, we can't provide in the, in the insulated walls that we love so much of North Reading High School um, and the tremendous value the students uh, are able to gain from the internship program. So already there's some increased enrollment from last year's numbers with that. If I could move along uh, and just focus on the goals for 18-19. Now again, this is the, uh, these are the goals that are in your current uh, FY19, FY2020 document. So um, our goal of continuing to advocate for staffing that helps uh, support a, an effective student-teacher ratio. Um, our goal of enhancing the educational program for students in curriculum instruction and assessment with a particular emphasis on providing students the skills they need to meet the challenges of today's global community. Our goals with respect to NRPS 2021 and that document, how that document certainly helps drive the initiatives of the high school. Goal number four, providing an extracurricular program to students that contributes to their well-roundedness as individuals. We've got a little bit of evidence of that with a, an additional club and we'll talk more about um, Another component of that with, with an athletic um, focus in a few minutes, not to mention another reference to the seal of, uh, of biliteracy, which again, I think is uh, related to that goal number four. Goal five, expanding the use of technology as a teaching and learning tool. We're gonna have uh, an increased opportunity for students at grade nine with uh, devices in the classroom. Uh, so that's, a, that's a, a nice experience that we're starting to uh, increase, more so than we have uh, already presently. Goal six uh, has to do with meeting the, the, the standards that uh, are defined in the New England Association of Schools and Colleges with our uh, 
step in that 10-year process. We are at the uh, five-year progress report. That is due in March of 19. So the members of our uh, school improvement team have heard me talk about you know, our initiatives in making sure that that five-year progress report is exactly where it needs to be. And again, that's in, the March, uh, in March of 2019. Obviously working collaboratively with the middle school and making sure that in these shared spaces uh, and as we share the building that there's equity and there's communication. And I want to thank Ms. O'Connell for our continued positive relationship. Um, I, I can imagine that there are situations where uh, you've got students from different grades beyond uh, you know, middle high school grades where you don't necessarily take the relationship for granted sometimes where I feel like when I come in and I, and I see Ms. O'Connor, I think, oh yes, oh my gosh, somebody who really is committed to their program, but also the, the element of cooperation that really makes, uh, makes the building work. And uh, if we can focus again on goal eight, uh, meeting the provisions of, of transitioning framework, uh, curriculum with uh, using the uh, mass frameworks as a guide changes in English and math, and now the curriculum work with the new science and technology engineering uh, curriculum. So that work will be um, continuing. And as we look at goal nine, continuing to utilize the ed evaluation model to perform teacher evaluation, enhancing teaching and learning. Again, this, uh, the, the, the benefit of that model I think is tremendous. Um, it allows for such a meaningful conversation between teachers and administrators and there's been a, a, a really strong push for teachers to work more collaboratively uh, with each other as a, as a component of that goal, as there are team goals that I think really um, help tie the school together and help uh, create an atmosphere where the teachers are, are not only um, just working with colleagues but invested with the work that they're doing as opposed to just sharing a space or sharing being fellow department members, but engaged in team goals. So I know I went kind of fast, but um, I'm hoping I didn't uh, make anything you know, less, uh, <laughs> less comprehensive or less uh, understandable for you. Questions? I think the only question I have, so, so next year will be the first year of the one-to-one -one for at the high school? So the one-to-one -one model next year uh, is devices in, devices in the classroom for the freshman students um, with, it, it, with the in-class uh, device, not necessarily the take-home device. Okay, so it's a, okay. So Please. Each, each year we advance one year with the pilot. So yep. Next year the ninth grade is the so-called pilot year. Yep. So those teachers and students work with them in the classroom. Yes. Only. It's the eighth grade now. They will have them. Yep. And then so we'll advance one year. That's the plan right now. Mm. There's the possibility that that plan may advance if the funding were to come. And we've kind of targeted like the end of the first marking period, maybe the second marking period, if the state budget were to support an initiative like mm -hmm. that. But right now, the plan is, as AJ said, to be in, in the classroom. That would be the pilot year for grade nine. And with, with, within the class, now this is my ignorance because I don't have a high schooler yet, but I imagine there's just certain, there's a lot of selection of what classes students can take. So if it's not a take home, will there be some classes that would have devices and certain sections that might not have it? Okay. Our, our math program, for, as an example, has right. gone all online. Okay. Right. And we yeah. remember so varying degrees of uh, yes. And the high school has a number of uh, Chromebook carts now. Yeah. And I and I assume the teachers have all been preparing for this and working with digital learning and. The teachers the, yeah. the, again. I think the teachers have um, this is the, their use of the device has been you know kind of ongoing for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And now the, uh, the availability of a device where they're not necessarily just signing it out for a block or I'm going to use it tomorrow, but, but to have it right there, I think, yeah, they're, they're, they are, um, I think, very comfortable with the devices. Absolutely. Other questions? Mrs. Kopke? 
So I'm just wondering the availability of Chromebooks for the 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. Like, are we consolidating the current Chromebooks that the high school has no. for the 9th? We are adding in additional Chromebooks for the grade 9 students Okay. in those classroom settings. <clears throat> not, not tapping to our current resources of the other grades. Okay. But it's a good question. With the internship program, yes. roughly what percent increase are you looking at for this coming year? You said there was going to be some increased enrollment. Right. So right now we had, I would say it's probably like a 3% increase, 4% okay. increase. And do they have to meet certain criteria? Yes. To be yes. So they, they have done some research. They've, they've provided a resume, documentation. They are interested in the field. Okay. Um, and they've, you know, with some support, made some contacts with respect to uh, okay. businesses that would entertain their internship. Oh, so they internship. have to do sort of the outreach to the yes. businesses? Yes. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Thank you. Absolutely. Do you have any, um, is there any availability of just seeing what companies are involved in, in the internship? There, there, there is a, uh, a spreadsheet, a, a database, and uh, the guidance department works to build that database. The assistant principal works to, so there's a, there's a shared database that is constantly being kind of reviewed and uh, added to, edited. Do we, do, 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 do you, does the school communicate with the companies directly at all, or is it all through the student? Oh, no, we'll, we'll, we, will, we, will, we will speak with the companies, yes. Um, is there a way to share that, just a list of companies with us, or I'm uh, just curious what, what, kind, what companies and what kinds of companies are involved? Well, I was, it, it really <laughs> it runs the gamut. Right. Um, and, you know, I mean, that, that database uh, with, you know, if I talk to our, our guidance department, I can say, hey, listen, how do we, you know, can we get yeah, a, little nice more, a little more PR for this, uh, for this, uh, this program? Absolutely. We I'd could do that. In knowing I, it's, yeah. I can get a copy for you. Great. Yeah. The, uh, one more question. So, Mr., I, I was, one question I came in going to ask was sure. why there was nobody from the community on the council, but it sounds like Michael Walburn is, is yeah. a member of the community. I can go back to our, yep. Yeah. Just because he signed it as a parent, that's just my question. Oh, uh, you know what? I, I that was a typo on my okay. error. It's my mistake. Commu okay. He is our community rep down okay. here in the corner. Thank you. Excuse me, Mrs. Kopke. I think that's a. Uh... I have just another question about how the internship works. Is yeah. there someone who kind of oversees the program yes. and the you assistant know, principal meets uh, Mike with, Downs? You know the employees. students turn in a log. They uh, they have a responsibility to uh, document kind of their experiences. And uh, that, you know, that kind like of like the students have to write up a paper or something. They, they maintain or their log. Like that. Yes. They okay. maintain their log, and, and again, have certain a certain number of criteria that they follow through. And then, as far as grading goes, who assigns? The assistant care? principal oversees the, the the those students on the internship, reviews the 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 log and okay. the journal entries and things like that, and assigns a grade that way. That's a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. If I remember correctly, the internship is actually presented as an offering in the in the it student. Is. Yeah, it's right. It's it's in the course uh, program of studies. Yep. We should add it's it's only available to seniors too. It. Excuse me. Yes. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Okay. If there's none, may I have a motion to accept the high school improvement plan? I uh, so move to accept the high school. Uh, improvement plan. Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. LaPrat. Thank you. You have to stay for a couple more. Yeah, I'm happy out. to, yeah. I'm Let me gonna, just uh, I'm gonna move back up transition this a little bit. <clears throat> Okay, so thank you. So moving on, the, we have a presentation about the North Reading High School Seal of Bioliteracy program. Mr. LaPrat. Thank you. Be with you and just queuing up here. Yep. 
Yeah, right behind you. Yeah, right here. Because it came back up to you too. Thank you. Oh, here we go. Thank you. So what Mr. Bernard is handing out now is um, a uh, copy of the PowerPoint that we're going to look at, uh, the Seal of Bioliteracy Initiative, and a brief explanation and background there on, um, on that second slide. So this is an award that's given to graduating seniors who have attained complete proficiency in English and a partner language. Uh, and what this proficiency includes is complete fluency in all four domains, reading, writing, speaking, and listening, when applicable, um, of both languages. And that kind of when applicable um, will, would be language specific. There are certain languages that, uh, for, for example, sign language, American Sign Language, right? Uh, you're not necessarily listening, uh, but you're, uh, you're able to demonstrate fluency in, in the other areas. Um, as it says, their program is designed to both motivate and recognize students who have pursued and attained bilingualism during their academic career. And this is part of a national initiative signed into law in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in the, this past fall, November of 17. So again, the, the um, Seal of Bioliteracy Initiative is looking to promote this type of award and recognition at North Reading High School. Earning the Seal of Bioliteracy, um, all students that uh, attend the school are able to apply. Uh, students are also obliged to provide the community of North Reading no less than five hours of linguistic services as needed. That is a part of the uh, earning the, the seal of biliteracy, that during your time at North Reading High School, you may be called upon to provide some community service as an interpreter or uh, other um, service with respect to that, um, that language. Awards and recognition will be given to graduating seniors at the, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> at the annual spring student recognition night and a graduation, um, and what that is also reflected on the student's transcript. So they'll be denoted in the graduation program that they have earned the CL of Bioliteracy and have a pin. Uh, the steps to implementation for this initiative. Continued research of the CL of Bioliteracy program, uh, information gathering that's, that's, gone, that's been ongoing. Uh, working with other regional school districts, with other advocacy groups around it. Uh, we've already piloted the stamp test in three languages, Spanish, French, and Arabic. Um, so the students have got a kind of a, a little bit of an experience there. Uh, the Seal of Bioliteracy Committee currently has uh, members from a, a number of stakeholding uh, groups, teachers, parents, students, and administrators, and a plan for implementation has been developed. And that's what's on the next slide there. You can see kind of identifying and defining uh, what are the criteria, what is the award and recognition, what does that look like, what are our costs or budget factors, what are the leadership responsibilities, and how does the test itself work. These are a number of uh, a number of the topics that the committee has undertaken and has researched and has uh, presented a plan for. The seal of biliteracy, whoop, I can't tell when this shuts off on the screen, okay. A number of uh, contributors to, the, to this um, initiative are listed here uh, on this slide, also in your packet. Uh, and as you can see, um, it's, it's a really, um, energized group with uh, a number of very committed participants, something that I hope that the school committee would uh, endorse and allow us to continue to pursue to make this uh, something that North Reading High School offers as part of its uh, foreign language programming. Thank you. And questions? Questions? Mr. Webster? Mr. McGowan? No, I think it's yeah, it's very exciting. It really is. It's nice to see yeah. that. Uh, so I, I have a few questions, and then I see Mrs. Kopke with some questions. Um, 
So with the fluency, so there's no, yes. there's no requirement that they actually have even taken a foreign language. So if somebody comes that's, in bilingual, they can that's true. get the record. That is then. true. Okay. Yep. They would, they, they would pass the, take the test and meet the, meet the criteria. They don't have to have taken a, uh, they may already be bi bilingual. Can you get more than one? I think, I think the seal of biliteracy essentially means that you're, yeah, you've, got, you've, got more than, you've got more than one, yeah. Um, and then when you were, do you have an idea about what year you think this would be, like for what graduating seniors? Is oh, I, we, I, we'd like to have it implemented so that the yeah. class of 19 would be, would be uh, awarded the uh, okay. recognition, absolutely. And then, and then with the community service requir or requirement, yes. I guess, is, has there been any outreach to the community about, you know, like where that need would be, like what partnerships to be able to help them? I think there's been some initial contacts and steps taken, um, for sure. But again, I, I don't think the committee is looking to go too far without the school committee's approval. And, and um, yeah, because when, when you were when you were explaining, you said that if, if there is a need and if there is right. a requirement, I just want to make sure that there's an opportunity well, for everybody to get five hours. If again, if. If, if I if I'm say if my uh, second language is Arabic and yeah. there's just it doesn't happen, but would it you doesn't. Still, would you still be able to get the seal then if you can't do? Five yes, hours? you would yes. still be eligible, but it's stated as an obligation, but not as a requirement. That's right. It's an obligation. I think They're that's uh, obliged to exactly how yeah, it's make themselves phrased available in the language. Service yeah. effort. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Kopke, do you have a question? who are pursuing that avenue. Mm. We don't offer Arabic, so it right. could be whatever native language they, they come to North Reading with. Right, and then they're making sure that, we're making sure that they're completely competent and fluent in English. So the test, it looks like there's two testing sessions. Yeah, that's propo the proposed two testing English sessions. English test, and then. No, there would be a, there would be a, so for, uh, Fluency in English, we would say that the completed English coursework would serve as that test. Okay. Fluency in the other language, now we'd be looking at the stamp test or, or some other approved testing mechanism. And the idea that we would have two test sessions is, if that's, if that's your second question, if I can answer that, um, is that in the fall, if we, if we have an opportunity to get some students tested, so they can put it into their uh, college application packet and then say, okay, you know, this is something you uh, are looking to do and why not make it a part of your, um, you know, your portfolio as a prospective college student. And then in the, in the spring, we would have one at the end of the year for the, you know. I mean, of I'm kind of likening this to like an AP kind of culmination of coursework or like an achievement or SAT two type, I mean, is that what this is similar to? Uh, I think you could say that. I think that's, I think that's a reasonable conclusion. But it's yeah. not supported by, excuse me, uh, it's, not, it's not supported by necessarily by classwork in, at North Reading High School. Correct. It's, it may be, or it may not be. It may have been, but it Right, it, it may be, but it may not be. It's really that we're, if I'm understanding it correctly, that we're providing a mechanism, that's and a t especially including a test, that uh, allows them to demonstrate that they are, uh, in fact, bilingual. bilingual. At least bilingual. That's, that's exactly right. Bilingual. And then recognizing that. And recognizing, recognizing that fact. Right. Sure. And the, the only other question is on the in, in, sorry, the initiative contributors. Yes. Can you explain a little bit, is this a, a lot of community members? Because I think I know some of the names. Parents. A lot of parents that are involved in this? Yes. Okay. If I, I if you don't mind. Sure. I could go back. So the, Curriculum coordinator for foreign languages for the district, Amy St. Arnaud, really is the one who took the lead on this um, initially. And she was the one that did the outreach with the community um, through um, crafting an email that I ended up sending out back mm, probably in maybe April, May. And from the, mm -hmm. that period, there was a series of meetings held over maybe a six week, six to eight week time frame that ultimately developed the report to submit to the principal. Um, for his approval and then to bring it here. And we were actually very pleased with the number, I mean, it's not a huge group, but we were pleased with the number of people that as parents wanted to be involved and were pretty regular contributors at the meetings. And I think they saw this 
Um, many of them are, are not English native speakers themselves. And so I thought, I think they saw that this was a nice opportunity for something that was, they were passionate about to, to kind of, you know, bring to a school that, you know, doesn't necessarily have a lot of students that are non-English speaking or primary language speakers of English. So, um, and from that, it really, it, it, it took off, I think, rather quickly and brought us to the point tonight where, um, you know, it's something I touched upon back in the fall when I did my year two update, Mr. Buckley and, and Mr. Webster will remember or, or might recall that when I did my um, annual update for NRPS 2021, it was something we were kind of exploring at that time. And it was nice to see that within a relatively short period of time that we're at a place where we, we think we can do this for the class of 2019. It's nice to recognize things for the fact that there's so many global organizations out there. Exactly, And just right. bigger picture, the Thank US you. is behind yeah. with, um, you know, people being able to speak I, multiple languages. I think languages. that's the, think, exactly the you're spirit, absolutely the spirit right. of the award. Mm -hmm. the, the right thing. I agree. Yeah. 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 Where they're going. And I think our, our international travel mm -hmm. experiences for students over the last several years, I think has done a lot to open up their 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 world so to speak and, and really a view into you know what is out there beyond you know kind of the insulated world that they live in right now and and, and i think it's done a lot to kind of you know show that culturally there's a lot to learn and how how am i best able to, to um, whether it's you know compete globally or enjoy you know other cultures and it's through language and so i think i think that's been a bit of a hook in a good way for our students as well and it's a national initiative Right. It, it is. Right. bigger than, you know, even the state. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's no further <clears throat> comments or questions. One comment. One more. You have a mic already. Just a <laughs> comment. Um, I think if the committee does endorse this, I think that should serve as a goal for increasing and improving our foreign language, you know, department at the high school and at the middle school. I think if we value this, then we should then value you know, improving those those programs at our high school. We, we've had that goal for about 15 years <laughs> but, uh, and I, no money, and I expect that to continue, the goal without money. But I think it's true, though, and it'll be interesting to see what students are able to, who are interested in taking advantage and, and, and uh, attain the designation, mm -hmm. uh, how many uh, of those students will be students who have learned a foreign language through the North Reading yeah, public schools right, as right, opposed right. to those who came here with a native language and have just become or maybe already were proficient in English. Um, perhaps that will be a um, uh, an interesting data point for the town to consider. I would I would agree absolutely. We, Something certainly I'm interested in, in looking at. Yeah, and we you know I, I'm not so sure that how many people are aware. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, but we have had students in our district across all three grade levels that have come with. Ve sometimes very little um, understanding of the English language and have had to really immerse themselves fully. I mean, I, there, have, there have been a number of cases going back over the last several years. I mean, they're not, it's not a huge number, but it might be, you know, for North Reading, I think it's enough of a number that we, you know, have to start to think about things a little bit differently. And I think that's a good thing in this case. Yep. Yeah. I think my only other comment or concern would be that if, if this works, I think we eventually will have a some people pushing for other languages as well because there might be somebody that moves into the district that speaks Mandarin or speaks another language that's not on there and you know just want to make sure that you know again I think we start with one thing but eventually if there are other languages that are supported you're, you know I, I, we would like to be able to recognize them on their diplomas as well mm -hmm. so. okay if there's no other comments or questions I'll accept a motion to endorse the uh, North Reading High School Seal of Bioliteracy Program. Yeah. Motion to endorse. Yeah. I think that's good. Motion to endorse the North Reading High School Seal of Bioliteracy Program. Just, I think we have to approve it, not endorse it. You know, I, it was, Mr. Buckley and I had spoken about that. I think either is fine. I mean, it's whatever you are most comfortable with. I, I think it's a, it's a, is, but it's, it's a, curric it's it's a curricular it's initiative. If but you, is endorsing something really approving something? I don't know that you need to, uh, you're not obligated to approve. I know that's what your report says, but I don't think a, a motion to approve hurts. It certainly doesn't limit us in any way. So if you're more comfortable with that, that's fine. Yeah, yeah we've spoken before about whether or not we need to endorse this to have it occur, or if we need to approve it. 
I mean, you approve new mm -hmm. courses. Mm -hmm. so that might be that might be appropriate to approve, approve as I, a course of study. I both approve and endorse, so <laughs> I, could vote, I could vote on. I approving you endorse. Approve. Don't you? <laughs> I could vote well, on that might be the, that might be the better wording. Okay. Is, is, is to approve. Okay, yeah. so we're going to do uh, a motion by Diana, second by Rich. Second. Okay. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, continuing on. I'm still a Pratt. I think it's, yes, it's, it's still me. Running high school cooperative swim team. Right. Thank you. Uh, so I'm asking uh, for your approval to continue the work with respect to um, looking at taking our swim team as it currently exists and um, you know, I guess uh, creating a relationship, or a co-op relationship with Wilmington High School so that um, our swim team would serve as a co-op, North Reading High School and Wilmington, uh, supporting both programs and, and sustaining both programs. Uh, this is uh, a conversation that's been ongoing, certainly with uh, both athletic departments um, I know the uh, Wilmington uh, School Committee has approved the venture. Um, the Cape, uh, both the Cape and League uh, and the Northeastern Conference have approved the venture uh, and presenting that to you tonight for your approval that the swim team uh, move into a co-op relationship with Wilmington High School to support the, uh, the existence of, those pro of that program here and also make it sustainable for them as well. Okay, thank you. Questions, concerns from the committee? Just quickly, a little history of the swim team or, or what uh, over the last- How did we get here type of thing? <laughs> so we currently, sure. to be clear, we cur currently have, we support our own swim team. We have our own swim team, that's right. And that's what's, right. what are the numbers so, this year? What are the numbers we think going forward? Uh, so we have had, the, 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 the numbers have been um, specifically, I don't have that, specific data but I know the numbers have been uh, we sustainable we but we're but we're I think we're looking at yeah. the numbers potentially moving down a little bit and then Wilmington reaching out to us and saying um, you know what about uh, some kind of a co-op arrangement um, I think what do we have 20 25 25 I was gonna say 25, 25 total yeah. yeah and roughly how many Wilmington um, students are interested I'm, I'm somewhere between, I think, six and ten. Yeah, this is, it's more driven by Wilmington's, well, what's yeah. per yeah. perceived right. to be an inability to sustain a program on their own. Yeah. We've been, we've, yeah. we've, we've benefited from a co-op in the right. reverse. For sure. Yeah, we right. have small numbers and, and such, so. And would, would this in any way kick North Reading students off? Could the, our team support the combined numbers of both? Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, we, would, we wouldn't be pursuing it. Yeah. One, and just one budgetary note on this. So we, we would receive an additional you know, user fee from the, the Wilmington students that would participate. And we do have our rental rates are going up for the Burbank YMCA swimming there. We have a, we're on a, involved in a transition plan over the next three years. But those rates are also going to go from about $4,500 to close to $12,000 over the next you know, three years. Every community. Wait, what was it? What's it now? 4500 to 12,000? Yes, yeah, so well, next year we're gonna be 6,500 and then we're closer to nine and then eventually we're, we're up close to 12. Uh, Reading is also experiencing the same thing. They're, they're, they're phasing, they're phasing a, a, an increase in um, because of their costs. So it would help you know, deter some of that additional cost. Have, well. we, have we had discussions with Wilmington about what their, their participants would pay versus ours? Would it be evenly it, divided and then? They pay $400. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same fee. They'll pay the, the same fee as in North but, but with $400, that's They'll what, pay $400. But wait, but with $400, that's what we would do. But the school committee, the, the school budget might have to support if it's more than $400. Would we do a pro rata share of the number of the total amount divided by the people? And if it's more than $400, it would be for, more than $400, and we would look to Wilmington to support that, or? So we're not, we're not um, anticipating that the- It wouldn't be more than $400. Right. Yeah, we, okay. we wouldn't, um, the costs, right, at least initially, there wouldn't be any additional costs to the program. Okay. By adding Correct. Only students. Correct. Right. And so $400 these, would these fully cover- These co-ops are two year, they're two year, yeah. two so year deals anyway. So there's not a marginal anyway, so. increase in cost based on additional students. Correct, yeah. Yeah. correct, yeah. It's, it's a two year commitment we could decide right. after the second yeah. year. Would we wear North Reading 
uniforms. Paid in suits. We would. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, we have a we have a girls co-op team where we had some of the best players, and it's not the North Reading team. We're, we're, we're the host. We're the host. We're the host. Okay. We're the host school. In this yeah. case, we are. Yeah. Okay. Just a couple questions. Um, which league would we participate in? Cape Ann? This would be Cape Ann, yes. And Wilmington... As the host school. Wilmington students do not pay a user fee for any of their sports. So would Wilmington School District be giving us money toward the program, or how would that work? It's up to them. The, the, student, yeah. the, student, the user fee is paid by the student. But that's up to them if Wilmington wants to. So you would bill Wilmington whatever their cost is. The 400 times the nine. Or number of students. But the students would be, would, would not be. Right, paid. they would elect to either pay or subsidize, that would be up to them. Right. Other questions, comments? Okay, we have a motion to approve the North Reading High School Cooperative Swim Team. Make a motion to approve the North Reading Cooperative Swim Team with Wilmington High School. Second. Any comments or questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Tremendous. Thank you, Mr. LaPrat. Right. Just like Little League. All right. And now before we go back to the beginning again, since we have a community member here on number six, let's, so why don't we uh, try to go to the performing arts user fee as well. Mr. Connolly, would you mind yes, speaking on the performing arts user fee? So in your packets this evening, um, we included a memorandum with a couple of uh, several financial spreadsheets that we hope can kind of provide some, some background as well as uh, some framework with what we're recommending um, this evening in terms of making uh, some recommendations towards the addition of a performing arts user fee. And um, as Mr. Webster shared with you at the June 11th meeting, um, you know, recent changes to the adopted uh, NREA contract with um, the Teachers Association in North Reading, as well as the, the, the school committee, um, did include sort of a restructuring in some sorts of the extracurricular, um, you know, stipend amounts and, and extracurricular activities as well as the, the performing art activities as well with some, some changes to the, the, the stipend amounts um, and in some ways kind of pulling the performing arts uh, related activities um, and separating those into the, the, its own, its own you know, salary schedule and structure. Um, so I think Mr. Webster at this meeting kind of mentioned as a result of this uh, adoption of the new contract and the new, the new structure and the new arrangement that, that there would be a a proposal at the upcoming meeting, which is this evening, for a an, an additional um, you know small fee, um, performing arts user fee, to be introduced at, really at each level next school year. Um, that would be the high school, the middle school, and the elementary school. So um, the, the the memorandum kind of talks about some history that I think we went into some detail of of that at the last meeting when we talked about the contract. Um, but certainly what we were involved in, both members of the administration as well as members of, uh, you know, teachers, members of the NREA, had really worked uh, pretty collaboratively over, over several months leading up to the collective bargaining process to collect a lot of data through some surveys of um, existing club advisors and so, and so forth about really what the, the weekly and annual hour commitment uh, was associated with each club. Uh, there was a lot of benchmark um, and, and data collected through our comparable districts with respect to extracurricular activities uh, in terms of what some of the other contract language was, what some of the categorization or, or matrix language was in terms of how other district looked at both extracurricular clubs as well as performing arts clubs and, and what the corresponding stipend amounts was as well as some corresponding user fees were to go along with that. And essentially what we, we did was we created the four categories um, similar to the categories that exist with the athletic program stipends that had been in the contract for some time, an attempt to create both equitable and kind of market competitive um, you know, process when dealing with extracurricular and performing arts you know, activities and their corresponding stipend amounts to, to staff. 
Um, this also involves segregating the performing arts activities, in some cases recommending new positions and stipend amounts that were competitive within the region and the market of uh, when we compared ourselves to other school districts, certainly that we uh, compare ourselves with as well as the you know districts that are certainly within this region and in this in this area um, so you know the end result was you know created um, a restructuring of, of these stipends in the, in the new teacher contract and this the work of this committee can really be found on really pages 30 through 35 of the new teacher contract and most of that work was is also reflected in the spreadsheet analysis that was given um, in the backups of pages one through six in, in the memorandum and the handout that uh, was put together in the packet to, for discussion this evening. Uh, but essentially what the proposal is, is that we would introduce a new performing arts user fee um, at the high school of $100 next year, uh, the middle school of $70 next year and at the so elementary, right? I'm sorry, $75 next year and at the elementary school, a $60 performing arts user fee. Um, we feel that, you know, we, a lot of analysis and discussion uh, with the administ administration went into um, this proposal and why we landed at the proposal we're making this evening and, and, and what these amounts uh, are. We certainly uh, wanted to accomplish a few objectives in making this recommendation this evening. The first would be we certainly wanted to meet our FY19 budgeted offset amounts and certainly uh, remain with, within our budget allocations and, and assumptions that we made during the FY19 19 budget process. And that required making several assumptions on what the student participations will, and enrollment would be in, in these programs. We, we certainly have made the assumption and the assertion that the enrollment and the participation would mean trends would remain relatively consistent. Um, further, we felt that the proposal that we wanted to uh, make a proposal initially that we ideally would have sort of the, the, the least impact in terms of adding an additional fee to families. Um, uh, you know, we, ne we certainly never want to you know, introduce new fees. It's something we've, we've, we've tried not to do, um, but we, we felt that you know, this was necessary at this time given the, the changes to the structure <coughs> and the contract. And we did feel, um, you know, this proposal, uh, you know, this evening would have kind of the, the least impact of, of the, the smallest amount of families in terms of asking them to pay, to pay an additional fee while also allowing us to kind of meet our, our budgetary offsets for fiscal year 2019. The, at this point, the, you know, adding the $100 fee to, to the high school level, you know, we feel you know, potentially in the range of you know, 60 to maybe 65 students at the high school would, would have to pay an additional $100 um, um, that they may, may not be paying uh, currently. Um, adding the, the $75 fee at the middle school level you know, could potentially impact between you know, 40 and 45 students of an additional $75 fee that they may not be paying currently. And at the elementary level, we actually feel the majority of students participating in drama and the musical and productions over the last few years have actually been accustomed to paying uh, a fee, in some cases maybe a little bit less, but in some cases maybe a little bit more of the, the fee uh, that we're recommending th this evening. Um, so it's actually the, the same $60 fee at the, that we're recommending was what the bachelor students uh, you know, paid that participated in the musical at the bachelor school this, this past year. Uh, this past month, actually. So we did feel this approach would have the least impact to families at each level. Um, because this, new, this is certainly a new process and there are certainly some unknowns and uncertainties that, are, that, that does exist and certainly the, the projection of, of this revenue and what the participation in student enrollment would be, we, we did certainly recommend that this proposal would be revisited um, on an ongoing basis, certainly in the spring of 2019 for fiscal feasibility and, and other adjustments as needed. So there, there was a lot of information um, included in the spreadsheet tables and some of the analysis and backup of some of the assumptions we were making of how we would um, both meet the, uh, the projected costs along with 
you know, what the general fund and the user fee and potentially in some cases the ticket sales would support. So I'm happy to kind of walk th through each page with you or I'm happy to kind of to take questions uh, as needed. You know, I think in some cases I think it was somewhat self-explanatory what we were looking to accomplish, but um, you know, we, we didn't want to kind of, you know, go from zero to, to 60 on this. We wanted to, you know, I think we, we feel a, you know, a fee is, is necessary um, and we, we wanted to kind of start start as, as small as we can in order to meet our, our budgetary offsets and and uh, and kind of monitor it on an ongoing basis and, and see where we're at. So we did feel, um, you know, the $100 fee at the high school, the $75 fee, fee at the middle school can certainly be considered a, a relatively small impact based on the, the benefits and all the ongoing, um, you know, how much goes into participating in, in these you know, plays and musical productions each year. Mr. Chair, if I could just add, as the member of the um, negotiating team, I just want to make it clear to parents that th this fee does not, will not be required for standard band and chorus at elementary, middle, and high school. This is for um, beyond that, performances, uh, stage band, notorious plays, uh, Etc. So this will. So we'll still have standard chorus and band at all three levels of school that do not require uh, fees. That's correct. So we tried to break it down in, in the spreadsheets of what what the fee would cover. And, um, you know, what the various fees that do exist. So that the two hundred dollar user fee that does exist currently for extracurricular activities. The the idea behind this proposal is that fee would would continue at its existing level, and there would be an introduction of a new performing arts fee um, that would cover, in most cases, at the high school, participation in the musical, um, in the play, um, a cappella, stage band, flag, squ flag squad, um, as well. But the, the, you know, there are several other activities that are ex at both the high school and the middle school, for example, that would be either covered under the existing fee or, the, or that no fee applies. And we kind of broke that down um, in the spreadsheets that was provided. So um, questions, comments from the committee? It, it would only be one time per correct. year. Correct, yep. It doesn't matter how many, from what the That's correct. So there was, okay. there was several proposals talked about, but we felt importantly that this, you know, starting out, um, in introducing a new fee that we, we felt, the administration felt it was important that it was just kind of a one-time fixed fee and that it would, it would, it would cover you. Um, for whether you wanted to do the musical and, um, you know, acapella and the other, uh, you know, performing arts, um, you know, programs that exist. Is it expectation that what this is being used for, the purpose, is going to meet the need or am I hearing a little bit that over the years, we might have to increase this over time to really meet the expectation. Yeah, I think um, I think it's going to have to be monitored because there's yeah. there's some inherent risk with anything that's new and, and what um, could happen with the student participation level. Um, okay. You know, I think I think um, I think it's going to have to be monitored. I? I think I think Michael's right. If you don't mind, I think we're 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 trying to be we're trying to strike the right balance. I think with this proposal, in that we don't want to suggest a fee that's um, too high, that it discourages participation, um, but at the same time we're trying, you know, so we're trying to be conservative in the, in the fee that we're proposing, but I think as Michael said, it's, it's something we suggest we, we're going to monitor. And, you know, I think we would like it to be that we're sitting here next year saying to all of you that it worked well in a year and we're gonna, we'd like to propose continuing. Yeah. And that certainly is the goal. We're not, we don't have anything preconceived that right. we're saying, oh, this is one one year, and then all of a sudden the hammer's going to drop next year. We're not we're not anticipating that, and we're certainly not going into it with that yeah. with that thinking either. We're we're hopeful that this will, and I think that's why in the proposal we worded it as you know we'll monitor it for its economic feasibility. Like if it if it's working, great. If we have to make an adjustment one way or the other, we would be prepared to recommend that to you. I think, I think Michael did a great job explaining it, but just to get into a, a few more of the nuances, one of the things that this committee that studied the stipends did was to look at the amount of time that was being put in on each of these clubs and also in the performing arts. And also, one of the um, comments we heard from a number of people, not only people within the school system, but from parents, um, is that 
the amount of time put in in a lot of the performing arts areas are equal to, if not in some cases exceed the amount of time put in by uh, coach, athletic coaches, but the stipends aren't close. We've significantly increased the stipends in the performing arts department. I think it, they may be close to tripled. At least It's at least two and a half times mm -hmm. the total number. We've also increased some positions that weren't funded previously that we're funding now. So in order to do that- We decreased some. Right, but, no, but, but not in performing arts for no, the most part. across the board. Right, though. across the board. The other, on, on the regular stipends for extracurriculars, um, some of those were decreased, some were increased. Many of the ones that were decreased were decreased because, for example, almost all or all of the club meetings take place during the school day, during um, whatever, whatever power that- Power block. Power block. So there's no after school activity. Uh, the teacher doesn't have to spend any time after school, et cetera. So, so those were reduced. That kind of broke even pretty much, Michael, correct? Correct. About almost the same amount of money. Correct. But the performing arts was significantly increased. Correct. And we will be using um, some proceeds from the ticket sales for the musical to offset um, those increases. Uh, that's really the main um, the main area of revenue that we get Correct. from the Correct. Uh, performing arts department. Yeah. And it will, just on the accounting side of it, um, mean the creation of some new revolving accounts to track right. the user sure. fees and the ticket sales and um, the payments and so forth. So it will change a little bit of the accounting side of what the business office and the financial operation is. In fact, it will act similar to the athletic revolving right. account that we have right. now where the fee money goes in yep. and then a request is made from the athletic director or from a coach or, or whatever and then Michael approves that request right. and then the um, right. expense is approved. Yeah, so, one, so once the school committee adopts a, an official user fee that kind of makes it, it fall under section of the law that requires a, the creation of a revolving fund which will then operate very similar to athletics and work as a budgetary offset for, that, for the user fee and the ticket sales and the revenue that's generated from that, that program. Um, Mr. McGowan? I find this comparison like apples and oranges, uh, the, the the list of the club names and the, and the, the basically the bottom the, the bottom section that shows the revenue uh, and then uh, the the expenses against the revenue and the percentage covered the perform because the performing arts is on uh, most of those positions under table two in the high school for instance are all focused on the cre on one activity the the theater basically right right so. I guess I'm just saying that on the one hand, you can say, well, we're, the user fees for the performing arts are covering 26% of the um, yeah, I know expenses. You yeah. Versus in the club section, it's covering 92% of the expenses. Right. Now, it's not really a good comparison, right? Because the, the performing arts and especially theater is such an intensive, there's such an intense need for advisors that it's generating a lot of expenses in that one, it was basically one activity. So I, again, I think this is kind of a communication issue. I think the, the, the point that, Ms. that Mel made right at the beginning is important. First of all, that the community understand that we're not raising, not charging fees for this for the regular uh, right. band and, and um, get a music program. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that's a huge communication part of this. Um, uh, I, I think none of us are happy about having to charge fees for these activities, but that is kind of the reality we're faced with, so. so. And, and to that point, if I could, at the bottom of that, what's numbered page one, we had put a footnote in there to that very point, Mr. McGowan, about those programs that are believed to be part of the curriculum, so to speak, an integral yep. part of the school. So that's the band, the chorus that Mr. Webster referenced a moment, or a service club. Yep. You know, there was, you know, yep. a student that belongs to the National Honor Society, for example. You know, we're not going to charge them the fee. Yep. You know, that, or, or so, you know, st uh, Student Leadership Academy, the mentoring program, that's another example. So I think your point is well taken that, you know, that the communication of that message out to people is important for us to convey. I have a number of comments <coughs> questions, but I know Mrs. Kopke came, so I'll, 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 I'll defer to her <coughs> first for some questions. I was just wondering, Mike, if you could share the plans for the elementary drama program. Sure. That's kind of been on my radar, specifically because my daughter attends a school that does not participate in a pretty big drama production. And I know there was an attempt this year to 
create a program, but it was pretty much self-funded through enrichment dollars, yep. and it far exceeded sure. the $60 user fee as far as my pocketbook. Um, I think it was close to maybe 300 what we paid for the full year for drama. So I'm wondering what the plans are moving forward for the drama sure. program. That's a great question. So the idea is that now that this framework has been officially adopted by the ratification of the, the contract, and then with the, with the creation of, we hope would be the recommended fee this evening, we feel like it would create a consistent structure for each elementary school to then follow. And there would be a consistent similar fee as well as this, the same opportunities for the, the musical um, with the same you know, stipends and staff uh, involvement in terms of assistance and, and direction of those students that are participating at each elementary school. So we do feel with the adoption of the recommendation this evening as well as with the framework put in place uh, by the adoption of the new, the new teacher contract that uh, it does allow for consistency in terms of what parents or students will be asked to pay for that um, experience um, at each level. But I think what we would have to certainly to, you know, work out is um, you know, how many schools, you know, is it on a, somewhat of a rotating schedule? Or I, think, I think what may happen is you might see maybe two musicals a year and then kind of a two, a two and one and you know, there might be one, it may not, I don't think all three would happen every year. Right. Um, so, that, so that's the idea, but at least there would be offerings either every other year at each school. So you might have two elementary plays or, or musicals in one year and then, and then one the next. Um, but I think what would be achieved is the consistency in terms of the user fee charged to parents for that for a very similar experience with the same level of professional staff and guidance throughout now, the process. But now with the fees though, so the fees are going for the stipend. There's other fees associated with these programs, costumes and anything else that's needed so would those be above and beyond charged to parents or would that where would that where the money the costumes they, be, they don't pay for the costumes yeah, now they also they, they do program booklets right you know fundraising initiatives. Okay. Yeah. that wouldn't yeah i wouldn't There's think no that, that would go that. away right the idea is though this fee would, would be what they would they would pay there might be some other fundraising or some other you know solicitation of donations or mm -hmm. gifts to help supplement but the idea is that they would pay the, the recommended fee and you know and that that would cover um you know everything program right, pa program yeah, participation might be asked to pay additionally for like a t-shirt or something yeah. a production staff t-shirt okay for their um to participating but this would be the user fee that they would pay julie do you have other that, questions that, that makes me very happy <laughs> thank you um i have a few questions i don't know if you can answer but um as i know that the committee that looked into this was in favor of this has anybody spoken to the maskers or the, or the parents in there? Do you maskers know? is 100 percent. Maskers push this. Okay. They did. Yeah. Even the members are just like the, the head of the maskers. Well, I, I'm not the sure, advisor. but I know okay. the, the advisor. The advisor. advisor. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Pushed it. With regarding to f with, with fees, I know there's a cap on various fees, like the athletics and the user. You know, for families, would this is there a family cap on that would go towards like if you're playing if some students doing sports and some doing regular activities and some doing maskers. Is there any combined cap or just caps on each one individually and this would be above and beyond? Yeah, we didn't, we, caps. it was discussed, uh, I think just in terms of, um, you know, it, it's not part of this recommendation, it's something we're um, advising on doing currently. You know, which is why we were trying to keep the, the, the user fee as, as small as we could um, and not offering a a user fee based on you know per club or you know two hundred dollars for the first you know play and then hundred dollars for the second play if you want to do do two so um, uh, Michael I just want to get too much of a it would just impact the, the revenue that we're trying to yeah this fee is much less than what was recommended by the committee um, that was, yeah. came up with the um, the new stipends it's much less. If, if we had, were implementing that, we the kids who could be paying would be paying up to three hundred dollars yeah. at additional. the high school and additional, additional, right? Right. So, we're, so this does not incorporate a family cap proposal for uh, yeah. for extracurricular. Yeah. And then with at the elementary, you mentioned that the batch already had a fee. I was I was just curious if this would be the first fee at 
at an elementary to? No. So the okay. little school paid 52 years ago, so it might be a small increase for them because okay. um, they would be due to put on a play next year. So, yeah. But the batch paid the fee that we're recommending right. of sixty dollars this evening already this year. And I think the enrichment fee and the is enrichment seventy five, seven, yeah, mistake. or seventy for every six weeks, or every eight. Over the course of the year, it no, was substantially for, more. No, but one one enrichment program was seventy. Right. Yeah. For so six just, weeks. Correct. Six weeks. So we paid. Right. Over three hundred dollars. This is streamlining that. Okay. Other thoughts, questions, concerns. Um, what is the mechanism? I guess this is a general question. Um, one of the things, many many things I don't know yet, um, for uh, students, uh, families who who are disadvantaged economically who can't afford fees. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, once, so when a school committee adopts the fee, it would follow the financial assistance policy. So if a child qualifies for free lunch, they would receive a full waiver. If they qualify for reduced lunch, they would receive a, a half waiver. And then if there's also another, if those students that are slightly above those guidelines, families, but still want to be considered for assistance, there's another application process and they could see, receive a partial discount of up to 25%. Okay. So that, that would apply, apply here. Great. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the maskers are a point of pride for the community and I just, I think it's great to be able to have the arts programs that we have here. Um, I, like Mr. Bergowin said, I wish, we didn't have to charge fees for it, but a lot of times there's, you know, you're prioritizing things and, you know, this is a way to be able to keep those programs and expand them, so. And I think consistency is important. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a big activity. Yep. So, okay, if there's no more comments, can I have a motion to accept the performing arts user fees? I move to accept the administration's proposal to impose performing arts user fees of $100 at the high school of 70, 70 or $75, $75 at the middle school and $60 at the elementary schools. Also, oh, actually, I'd also add to that for a one year period to be reviewed following the 2018 19 school year. Now, my only question in the proposal, the, it also talks about maintaining the extracurricular middle school high school activity fee at $200. We don't need any proposal for that, correct? No, no, that's no change. That's, that's, exist. that's no change. Right. Okay. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Addressing all the issues of the people in the crowd. We're going to go back to the continued business. <laughs> the crowd. There's a huge crowd today. The um, <laughs> is there any update, Mr. Bernard, on the MSBA SSBC? I have no update, Mr. Chairman. Excellent. <laughs> Moving on. The policy subcommittee. This is about well, Mr. McGowan. One of you like to take that and explain what we're voting on? Sure thing. Bear with me one moment. This is the second reading Correct. for the, um, the policy related to um, residency as it applies to new families coming into town. And you'd like me to summarize the changes again or? I mean, quickly, I mean, I think this is something that was been drafted by our attorneys, I believe. It was drafted by the attorneys. <clears throat> um, as you can see, the, the major pieces here are the changes to the responsible adult at the David, um, as well as adding a form that was listed in um, the policy already for the landlord shared tenancies at the David. So that was a gap that we had, and we're filling that by producing this form. Great. Any questions? Do we, should we vote on these separately? The revised, the revision, and then the the new affidavit, that or makes sense. yeah, second reading of each. Okay, so we have a exhibit, motion. So it's Exhibit Two and Exhibit Three. Okay, Exhibit Two of JBCA, so JBCA E Two. Correct. We have a motion to accept us for second reading uh, JBCA Exhibit Two, the responsible adult affidavit. I so move. <laughs> Second, anyone? Second. Uh, 
Uh, any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Unanimous. And now second, can I have a motion to accept new policy, uh, Exhibit 3 of JBCA, entitled Landlord Slash Shared Tenancies Affidavit? I so move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, now we're up to number seven of new business, I believe. Mm -hmm. the student activity audit report. Mr. Connolly, could you guide us through this? Yes, no, thank you. Um, so in your packet this evening, uh, I did include the uh, student activity uh, internal audit report, which was performed by the Massachusetts Association of School Business Officials, otherwise known as MASBO. So consistent with both school committee policy as well as state regulations, um, the district engaged MASBO to perform the required annual internal audit this past spring on the student activity accounts. Uh, this report was included in your packet. So just to remind and update the committee that uh, as part of the new regulations for student activities, we are required to perform an internal audit every year um, as well as an outside audit by a certified CPA firm once every three years. So the, the outside audit uh, by the certified CPA firm, which was Melanson Heath, was performed last year. So this year, in order to meet the internal audit um, obligation, we engaged MASBO. Um, in previous years, we actually had the town accountant, Liz Work, perform um, the audit. So we're hoping to get on a kind of an every other year, we would, we would, we would do the, the CPA audit firm you know, once every three years and then have, you know, maybe MASBO will perform the audit, which is mainly done by retired school business officials, um, and then go back to having the town you know, and this work perform the audit. It was deemed that myself and other members of either my staff are kind of too close to it to perform, perform the audit. So uh, MASBO report is, is included. Uh, overall, I thought the audit went very, very well. I was very kind of pleased with the report and, and the outcome. Um, as is pretty typical when any review audit is prepared, uh, is, is completed, you know, you're going to see a few, um, you know, findings or recommendations for improvements. And I thought the, the few, the three findings that were reflected in the report, I, I, I see those as being relatively fairly easy to implement and, and work on, um, as I stated in the, in the cover memo with the report. Um, but overall, I was pleased with the results of the audit, especially the statement that the auditor made where he felt we did a very good, sh good job in a short time frame responding to the recommendations made last year by Melanson Heath. So you know, Melanson Heath came out and did a very you know, thorough, thorough audit last spring, which required some changes to our school committee policy, which we uh, administered throughout the summer and early fall through the policy subcommittee and adopted those in, in uh, late summer months, early fall last year. And I, th I think over the course of this school year, I, I was certainly pleased with how well the, the staff that are involved in the accounts, um, the principals, um, you know, certainly my office, club advisors kind of responded to, um, to the task of, of meeting those requirements. Um, so that you know, in the three findings that I reflected in the report, um, you know, I felt were again relatively sort of sort of minor and things we can kind of easily adapt and work on, uh, as well as some of them just being kind of challenging in the nature of of working with student activity accounts and working with the various people that are involved, club advisors and school principals and so forth and support staff. That you know, it's it's we certainly make our best effort to collect cash receipts. Um, and deposit everything within 24 hours, but it's just going to be just the nature of it. it's going to be challenging to do so. So I think that was the first one of the first findings that it discussed. Um, but certainly some of the other things uh, we felt um, we can certainly work on. You know, the, the recommendation to have our um, club advisors also kind of either receive a copy or and sign off on the certified the quarterly. Um, Certify re reconciliations that we certify on a quarterly basis that are actually now presented to school committee, and then officially certified on a, uh, you know having the club advisors also receive a copy and sign off on those. I thought it was a was a fair recommendation and something we, we can certainly put into practice. Um, you know, making sure cash receipts and so forth are just kept 
you know, in a, in a, in a locked, stored in a locked safe, which we certainly do, and, and just trying to make sure we we receive all checks on our, in within 24 hours. So that's that's always going to be a somewhat of a challenge, but I think we'll we'll certainly make our best <laughs> effort to to meet those requirements. And then the finding number three was just, uh, you know, we felt this is a, a, a small, um, you know, change, something we've already spoken to the middle school and the elementary school um, staff about, and just that's just using that receipt turnover form when, when all, re, you know, receipts and so forth are turned over to the school principal's office for deposit. So we feel like that's a small, something, something small we can work on and certainly improve on on a very, very you know, short turnaround. Um, overall, I was definitely pleased to see the commendations that were reflected on page three of the audit that we've done a good job responding to Melanson Heath as I um, report from last year, as I noted, and um, they made comments that they felt the school committee policy, you know, manual and, and policy that does exist is, is up to date in, in accordance with the state re state regulations and requirements. Um, and then page four, the final page of the report, just is just some general advisories in terms of. Um, you know, nothing noting that we're not doing, you know, nothing noted for improvements or recommendations or findings, they're just things that um, that they have have referenced in terms of how, what the law states in terms of working with student activity accounts, in terms of how gift accounts are, are handled, how vending machine receipts are handled, in terms of how we solicit bids and quotes in, in Chapter 30B, all those things we're, compiling, we're complying with and, and certainly doing. Um, the one, the, the first one on the top of page four talks a little bit about maybe taking the, the acceptance of the law, chapter 71, section 47, to the next level and maybe just officially having the school committee vote to adopt that law. I, I kind of thought it was, um, you know, in, embedded in the fact that we've adopted a policy that references that law and we've voted and approved that policy, but, you know, he felt it wouldn't be so though it may not be required, it wouldn't be a bad idea to take it to the next level and officially adopt that we recognize that 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 master in law, chapter seventy one, section forty seven. So perhaps at the start of next school year when we or when we do certify the end of year balances, which will probably be at the July meeting, uh, when we close out on June thirtieth, that I would uh, entertain a motion for that for that official adoption. I, mean, I I found that curious since I mean I think if it's state law, we sort of have to comply with it. I don't know why we have to officially accept the state law that's in existence, but right. I mean that was a debate I had, I had with them as well. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I, well I just want to advisory. Yeah. You know. And I just want to recognize. I mean, I know you've done a lot of work on this. I was on the policy subcommittee last year, and it, the whole process of how money is received had to be had to be overhauled and new forms created and. Just to know that in one year, in the kind of the first attempt of doing it, that it was all done properly and that, you know, pretty much throughout the district it was complied with is just, you know, really, really good to see. And you know, I think you deserve a lot of credit for that, Mr. Connolly, for you know, creating the creating the documents, creating the forms, the process, and making sure that it was implemented properly. Great. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Certainly. Been a, a good effort for a team approach, certainly by the, 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 the administration that are involved, the, the school secretary staff that's involved, and, 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 and the teachers and faculty, and certainly the business office and in my office work very hard. Questions or comments? Else? Do you do you do any spot checking during the year uh, on any of these issues, or what? What? How do you handle all that stuff? We do. So I think one of the things that the 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 certifying, the official formalizing that process of reconciling, you know, the accounts at least quarterly, that, um, has certainly created that kind of that spot checking approach. I'm certainly more involved. We, we certainly were doing that monthly, but it was more informally, and we continue to do that. But now that we actually formally sit down, and there's a, it's, you know, my someone in my my office prepares it, I sign off on that, and yep. we we have that. It allows for that that checking mechanism to be sure. better better in pro approach yep. um, so that that does exist so that there is some spot checking there um, and the other thing that because you know we kind of had that extra layer of, of control and checks and balances in a sense that um, you know the, the, the each individual school does not have their own checking account so in a lot of, which is which the law actually enables them to do but we uh, don't have that so everything does flow through my office so there's actually no expense 
um, request for a disbursement of check that I don't see because I, I do sign those. So I, I am seeing everything. And we're catching most things before a check is dispersed, whereas if there was a checking account, we'd be, we'd be seeing those things after the fact and having to have those conversations. So I, think, I thought that was a good thing that the district did five or six years ago. And you know we've been able to turn things around and not develop any t you know hardship timeliness or any issues there. We've, we've developed a good, a good you know, workflow. Um, so that, that, that does exist there as well. Okay. Um, this is the whole report, right? This, not yeah, just, not just, just an yeah. executive summary or something? Yeah. So this is the whole report um, that we, what you have is what I received. Um, so it's, you know, I think it was a, a four-page report. But, you know, it, it's you know, the more thorough one is, is the Melanson and Heath one that's done every three years. This was more. Do you have a digital copy of that you could send me? The Melanson and Heath, yeah. yeah. I'm happy to just do so. like just to, to take a look at it. Yeah. I mean, the big, the big white spots were where he edited it. And yeah. Remove, remove, thanks. I didn't know. I just, because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they, you know, just be, you know. Okay. Fine. And now there's any action needed on this. So moving on to routine matters. Mrs. Bubble, would you like that too? Would you like that audit report, the full audit report? Maybe yeah, I can actually do that. I can provide that. Okay. So we can accept minutes even with those Cindy's not here, right? You can. I think so. Okay. So. We have one set of minutes to accept, May 21st, which I believe was, was that the first meeting for? That was the reorganization, Mr. yes. Yeah. And Mr. McGowan and uh, I thought it looked familiar. Ms. Boutwell. Yeah. Does it, did anything look problematic in it? Concerning? Any changes? <laughs> Names are spelled correctly. Yeah. I don't remember signing up for all those subcommittees. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. You must have blacked out. Okay. Well, there's Now's no your changes. chance. This is your chance. <laughs> if there's no changes. Can I have a motion to accept the minutes of the May 21st, 2018 open session? I will move to accept the uh, minutes of the May 21st, 2018 open session. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Moving on, the budget update. Mr. Connolly. Okay, thank you. So in your packet this evening was the June budget update, which essentially summarizes our financial activity through the middle of June. Um, the, the report, as we've done in the past, is broken into, into two pages, reflecting expense activity and payroll activity. Um, and at this point in the year, we're certainly in the process of closing out the fiscal year and viewing. I'm happy to report that the majority of expenses have remained within budgeted ranges. Um, as we have discussed in the past and as we um, prepared during the fiscal 2019 budget development process, we are in the process of uh, are finishing up prepaying sp special education tuitions to meet the amount that we forecasted and planned for during the fiscal year 2019 budget process. That uh, budget was predicated upon our ability to identify $150,000 um, of of prepayments, I'm happy to report that we were able to meet and, and even exceed that amount as, as we um, have closed out fiscal year 2019. So that will help provide some level of flexibility during fiscal year 2009 to help address any unforeseen or, or costs that we may not have been able to budget for during the process. Um, as a reminder, the law does allow us to prepay up to three months of out of district tuition costs. Um, and we've been able to, to meet a, an amount that we forecasted during the process and unfortunately been able to exceed that amount each, each year over the, over the last few years. Um, we certainly monitored the cost of utilities closely, um, you know, especially at the, we continue to do so at the, at the middle school, high school campus as well. And I'm happy to report that the, the, the cost of our utilities will remain within budget. Um, We've talked about the food service program each year. I'm happy to report that we closed out the month of May with a net profit of $5,300. Uh, we were pleased with the program's performance during the month of May as we exceeded our projected profit for the month by close to $1,000. The meals sold per day throughout the district were up on average of by 9.7% across the five schools when compared to last year. So now through the month of May, we are operating a little over $1,000 behind a projected amount that would yield a break-even program. 
We are hoping to have a, a, a strong month of June. If we were to earn a profit of 4,200 in June, uh, we would break even. So um, we'll, those are numbers we'll be looking at in, in the coming days and in the coming weeks ahead. Um, on the payroll side, you know, we certainly experienced a need throughout this school year to hire some long-term substitutes to fill extended leave of absences and number of positions this school year. So that certainly led to you know, some additional costs in the substitute uh, budget. Um, but certainly due to attrition, leave of absences, and in some cases staff turnover, there were funds available in the teacher, special education, paraprofessional, and custodial line items that we were able to repurpose elsewhere. And uh, overall payroll projections um, were very close to our budgeted line items. So as you can see by the report, uh, we are operating um, at this point only with a small amount of available funds as we prepare to complete and officially close out the fiscal year. We actually have until July 13th to do so. So we'll uh, be working on that over the next three weeks. Um, and I anticipate that we'll, there won't be you know, much available funds left at the, at the end of that process. Um, but overall, I think the district has are in you know a solid financial standing. Things are certainly you know tight, as we as we know as we head into fiscal year 2019. But we have we were able to achieve the carryover funds that were identified during fiscal year 2019 budget development process during the closeout of 2018. So at the my hope is that at the July 19th meeting, that Thursday meeting in July, I'll, I'll have a final. Fiscal year 2018 report for you. Let's go. It's, it's might be a tight turnaround because we'll be still be paying bills right up until that July 13th date and, and seeing where we're at. So if, if I can't have it, then it'll certainly be one in, in the August meeting. Okay. So I'll take it. Questions, questions, comments. Uh, my only question. Well, I had two questions. I can't remember one. One doesn't really relate to this, but for some reason the DocuSign is going to the junk folder now. <laughs> Oh, it's really? just no. you. As a, it's just, I think it's just you and Rich. I think yeah. it's just me and Rich. Yeah. You guys are all getting. Now that I know it, I was Diana now. It, but... Diana now too. So I don't know if you have to whitelist that or do something. Oh, I got it. I haven't had a problem. Yeah. I don't know if, if you're in your NRPS account. Right? I don't, well, you, for, for the you, first year on on the committee, I didn't have an issue. If you, it, it should work if you move it back into your inbox. It I should did. learn, but it doesn't yeah. seem. To, well, I shouldn't say that. We'll see what we'll see what well, tomorrow looks like. If you ever don't get my signature, I probably. I can have our oh. network administrator yeah, let, let us know. If look at that activity. Yeah. And see it might be because Gmail just upgraded. Yeah. If you're using Gmail, I don't use Gmail, so. Yeah. Okay. That I had to use yeah. Gmail to get that now. I get it on my personal account. Oh. oh. So maybe something. Yeah, I get it on both my personal and my Gmail. Main. Yeah. Um, I have it forwarded from my Gmail account to my personal. Uh, you could um. So Someone, why don't you could yeah. forward me the email that's going into your junk. What it looks like. What yeah. it looks like, just so I can have Nick, okay. Nicholas, our IT like administrator, it. investigate that. Yeah, I can do it afterwards. And then the, what did we prepay last year? Versus what? We pay, we was pre 150 paid, was the goal this year when we're a little over that. What, so what was the goal last year? So we prepaid 250,000 last year, and we did, did that again this year. Okay. So the goal last year was 100,000. The goal this year was 150. We had upped it by about 50,000. But if we, but we, the goal of 100, we did 250 last year, and we're going to yeah. do less than that this year, then. Yeah. So we was 150. We're only we were able to do two, a little over 250 is what we were able to do. So we were, we were about 100,000 okay. more than what than what we um, had forecasted. Yeah. So things are definitely a little definitely a little bit tighter, getting heading into mm -hmm. 19. Okay. Um, Quite a bit tighter. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think there's actually, there's, there's potentially, you know, there's some costs that potentially are percolating out there that we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Yeah. It'll be a difficult year, I bet. Mm -hmm. right. No more questions and uh, staffing update, Mr. Bernard? I do, Mr. Chairman. So I'm pleased to announce the following new staff in addition to those that I announced at the meeting on June 11th. At the Hood School, we're welcoming Kelly Costa as a grade three classroom teacher. Kelly has been working with us um, as a paraprofessional at the Hood School. And we've also um, hired a new uh, grade five teacher at the Little School, Catherine Polkari. She similarly had worked in the district uh, a few years ago um, as a long-term substitute, a stint at both um, the Hood School and at the Batchelder School, but has been working in Melrose for a few years and chose to come back to North Reading. Um, at the high school, 
We've hired a year-long uh, long-term substitute um, in the business department, Robert Bryant. We have a long-term substitute Spanish teacher for the start of the school year till about the November break, uh, Thanksgiving break, um, in Paul Burdett. Um, Matthew Sikarski has been hired as a new math teacher at the high school, and Tracy Nicholas as a new nurse at the high school. Alder, Paul Burdett's a North Reading grad, isn't he? Paul Burdett is a North Reading oh, guy. Nice. Yes, he is. Soccer player, I remember Paul. Soccer player, uh, very interesting background, having yep. served in the Peace Corps in Guatemala. Yep. And yeah, yeah. Well, very excited. How long ago was he grad, roughly? Ten years, I would maybe say 12 Paul, years. His brother Tommy was a senior my first year, so 04. He might have graduated like, yeah, oh, maybe 2010, something like that. No, I think I think he's a little older than my daughter was 2010. Yeah. So 2008. Yeah, 2008. Maybe four years maybe. behind Tony. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah. Nice family. Very nice family. Well, I know. I know on staffing, I know that the little school is very sad to see Mrs. Levitt leave, but she got a principal. She did her first principal position, in Reading. and so in Reading, and so I think that's great for her, but sad for us. Yes, that um, that position has been posted. Her her teaching position, we have not filled that yet. Okay. Bids and donations. Mr. Webster, would you like to take them? If, before we read them, though, I, I have a question, John. I, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for the 10,000 donation at, by the Hood Parents Association. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I don't understand why we're, we're buying water fountains. They, the, my understanding is they identified this as something they wanted to take on. It's the similar to what we have here with a water filler type bottle. and. It, was something they wanted to yeah. add. They, they felt the parents' that. association. It came from their desire to fundraise. I guess I understand it. I find it odd. That that's all. Uh, it's an infrastructure part of. Yeah, the they, there are water fountains there. I was you gonna know, say it wasn't, it, I mean, it's it wasn't a, a, a glaring need so much. No, I think it was the desire of, of their booster group, their parent organization, to want to upgrade them. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I agree with Mr. Webster. I think that so they can they can do that. I, I, I mean that's like a building project almost. I guess, I guess I'm just confused by the. Again, I'm not saying we don't want the money. We don't. I, I'm just confused I, that I, that's. I understand. We, yeah. we we spoke about it. Right. But I yeah. mean they can do it if we accept it. And I think it's you know it's, they chose to fundraise. It's not going to add any additional, you know, foreseeable costs. I'm surprised it's but, actually that little. I mean, coming right down to it, basically. Yeah, that is a pretty. Four is it four? Five. It was five. five. I think it's five. That's pretty cheap for five. Yeah. Uh, With the plumbing and everything that's involved. Based well, on what I've seen, replacing they existing. It. Right. So yes. they're not, you know, like it's creating like new, new plumbing. Yeah, but still, yeah. It is the proposal. I mean, we have a proposal that matches that. Based on how I've seen from what they cost up here for the new school building project, that's really, uh, <laughs> that's a real bargain, based on what we had to pay at the new school. Okay. I just wanted to ask about that. All right. Make a motion to accept with gratitude a donation of $2,160 from the Hood Parents Association to purchase 10 stand-up desks to be utilized across all grade levels at the Hood School. I second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Then I make a motion to accept with great gratitude $10,000 donation from the Hood Parents Association to furnish and install five new water filtration fountains at the J. Turner Hood Elementary School throughout the Hood School for the benefit of all students and staff. I second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, subcommittee updates. The athletic subcommittee met on June 12th. Mr. Webster and Ms. Boutwell will report. You want to get a report or? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, I like to give the new member some exposure. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. It, uh, that was your it was my first subcommittee for yeah. the athletic subcommittee, so it was interesting to listen in and absorb. Um, we did review the budget um, briefly. I know that there was a discussion quite a bit about the dugouts in the vocational school supporting um, the creation of an overhang right. for those dugouts. Yep. Um, and it seemed like that was something that was being discussed. I and think we're. Is it? A, is it I don't know, the school committee wasn't going to vote on it, the Northeast Vocal School Committee, right? Yes, and I have a meeting set, believe it or not, on September 5th, the first day okay. of school for our students. The vocational school folks are coming over here to meet with me about the 
the desire for the design. Great. Okay. Fabulous. So that's that's going to be great for the software. We're expecting project. that to be a fall a fall completed fall right. project. project. Yes. Okay. Um, we did talk a little bit about the facilities maintenance and some of the activities that True Green um, was performing and trying to get rid of. I guess there's some fields that really have quite a bit of clover all over them yes. and trying to get rid of that because it's um, a nuisance. Can they come out so. to our lawn, my lawn too, please? Yeah, they really <laughs> should. Um, it's probably more expensive though because we have to use special um, concentrations sure, for them yeah. to use on a school, on a school field property, right? So, yeah. I like to walk on my lawn. It would <laughs> probably be good. <laughs> And the other two highlights, I'd say, was what one of the things we addressed tonight, which was the swimming co-op. We started that dialogue, and that's why it happened so quickly, because that was just a few weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. So that that came about quickly. And, and second, um, we talked about the scoreboards for both the boys' baseball field, yeah. but mostly the girls' softball field. Right. And being open to a uh, potential sponsor right. to do something mm -hmm. in particular for softball. Yeah, we covered, um, I think we covered two things. One was a sponsor, and the other thing was possibly softball and baseball could um, collaborate. Collaborate, collaborate on fundraising. And fund. Yeah. yeah. Do a fundraiser. It's quite an expensive endeavor right. to, yeah. to put two new scoreboards in. I mean, the power right. exists, obviously, for the baseball existing scoreboard, but we have it brought in for the softball one. But yeah. aside from that expense already being covered, the boards themselves are still pretty expensive. but. You said we did bring in the power? So the, yeah, we had the, the softball. The, the softball. Yeah. There's power out in kind of the center field area. We had that done mm, probably a year, year or so ago. Maybe yeah. a little better than a year ago, I think. So the, it's ready to go. I think um, the one good thing with the baseball scoreboard, though, is that they're, hopefully the, the metal um, support kind of those support holes that are already in place yeah. could be used for a new scoreboard. And yeah, we found out that those are very expensive in, in, in and of themselves. So yeah, you're right. To have those already there is a help. <clears throat> Was it was this where last year there was the cost of the board isn't as much as the implement uh, the Correct. installation? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. For the softball, it was yeah. I don't know if they're going to be enough to support that big video board we're planning. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The there were a couple other things. Um, Michael did give us a brief um, update on the new vehicle we're buying. Right. Um, we probably won't get that until late this year, early next year, because of the right. timing and when we went to yeah. went to buy it. Correct. Um, yeah. And that will be trans to transport students of smaller teams. We'll get it in the winter. Hopefully, we can use it for freshman basketball yeah. in the spring. Use it for I don't know track uh, the smaller track when yeah. smaller groups go off and track meets tennis. tennis. Yeah. yeah, right. And then we talked about uh, some a few minor issues. One of them was at the uh, concession stand. With the floor being really slippery when wet, I think Diana had also up, yeah. um, heard some people talk about that. So we're going to try to get some mats. I don't know if we've gotten them yet or if you've measured for so, them. Yes, I did. I met down there um, very shortly thereafter. I don't know if it was the next, day, the next or day. It may have been the next day, I think. So I went down. I met with Wayne Hardiker and Marty Tilton, and we took measurements for the concession stand mats. Um, we did not measure for the bathrooms themselves we think those floors are okay right because they're kind they of more of a kind of grainy yeah they are the concession oh, stand has I that too meant the bathroom oh really yeah when we were when the relay for life when it was raining that did you day. notice it there yeah. too yeah i didn't go into the concession area. oh you know it was in people coming in and out of the bathroom whenever you would go in they would say be careful it's very slippery in there oh okay, okay. Um, so sorry i didn't clarify right. that. yeah i that you know what we can yeah. we can address that. that it's yeah. small you know they're small i was just worried you know someone slips falls yeah and right comes out, sure you know? no 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 that's <laughs> that's why i think we went down right <laughs> away but right. we we did go in the bathrooms but we thought it was okay because of the is, grit but i think if it gets wet it might yeah no that we could do that and then the last thing I wanted to mention, it's not related to the directly to the committee, is um, just the heartbreaking loss for the softball team. Mr. Venezia and I took the drive down to Taunton. I'll never want to be in a car with Jerry for two and a half hours in traffic again. He was driving too. Um, and you know, the the fascinating thing was, I think we had the better team. Um, the girls seemed a little jittery. Really long drive, and. Um, you know, we played the fifth largest high school in the state, which I just don't understand how the MIAA places a high school with 2,150 students in the same division as North Reading High School. Um, and I know they give the vocational schools a little leeway because they travel from different towns, et cetera. But that just seemed um, 
and I've, I've emailed the MIAA like I've emailed them on numerous other occasions. All the other occasions, I didn't get any response. Today, I just got a bounce back because their email box is full. <laughs> so um, I just the, asked. Emails from you? No, no. Oh, it may, it may in be. General. Oh. In general. No. Quota. Sorry. I, I, I simply asked them two things. I said, I, the venue, um, Taunton High School is a nice field, but I mean, to me, you don't have a semifinal state championship game where you have fans standing around the fence in the outfield. That's just not compared to what we were playing at in Lowell. And so I addressed the venue and I also addressed the issue of how do you have a school with, that has 1,050 girls where we have 800 students? How are we playing them mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. tournament game? I don't expect an answer ever, but. How did, how did this, was it close the whole time or was it just? I mean, we fell behind, we closed the gap to six to four, but we. At one point there was six to one, right? Yeah, it was six to one yeah. at one point, yeah. Good. I, I was just going to add, if you don't mind, I think another item that came up briefly at the Athletic Subcommittee meeting was about the AEDs. Oh, right. The defibrillators. So, and we are in full compliance, but I think we, I think I had talked about and encouraged Mr. LaPrit to make, to reach out to a um, contact, Michael Callahan, that's been very generous through his uh, foundation and his sister center. So we are going to, going to be getting two uh, additional portable AED um, devices, and we, we are looking into having the one that's inside the facility, in the um, mm -hmm. team room building, put on the outside. Right. We think it might make more sense to that have that That makes a lot of visible, sense. But it's in addition to the two right. portable ones. A lot of times that building is, could be closed and Correct. Does no it, access doesn't make to sense. We may need a new cabinet. I'm not sure what the cabinet's like. Like I hear they're alarmed. Yeah. But, we would be, but just so you know that yeah. we did pursue that and there's a couple more coming, which is a very nice do donation for us. And they've donated, Michael Callahan has donated a number of AEDs over the years. Right. Um, so. the, great. I have a, a question. <clears throat> the, the sunscreen dispensers, are they still at the high school field? So I, I believe we in. have two. Uh, one has been installed. I don't know if the other one is, but we have a second one. It was downstairs the last I saw. Right? Are they, I'm just wondering, are they kept... Are they kept filled over the summer when we're, people aren't here? Because it's well, people that use Well, you know, the, I mean, it's... It wouldn't be up to us. Yeah, there's I a, mean, it's, it's... We a, got those through a grant. Yeah. Um, but they keep you know, them... Do they keep them... I would check with, keep them with Marty Tilton, because that's a... Those are ours. Okay. Yeah, but, it's the, but they maintain the field. You, you see, you're saying about supplying the... the yeah, I, yeah. The, I don't think in the summer where, we're going to... it's their activity. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't... Just wondering, because I think it, I mean, it's great to have it, but if there are activities there and it mm -hmm. runs out, just yeah. random yeah. thought. Yeah. I just think that during the summer, for the most part, Parks I, and Rec um, I know what you're saying. pays yeah. the closest attention to that field because we don't have any activities there until August, mm -hmm. mid-August, probably mid to late August. It makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the NORCAM <coughs> update. Mr. Webster, you will be very happy. So NORCAM, we had their annual meeting and nothing of significance, but then at the end, they submitted a proposal to us. They would like to start broadcasting more activities from North Reading, including sporting events. The biggest challenge they have is they only have three full-time people, so their proposal is that if we can find you know, students or parents that are interested in learning how to use the equipment, that will, you know, they'll run some training sessions for them. People can sign up and you know, go and broadcast, and they'll even help with the editing or do the editing for us. Some of the challenges will be that there are fees for certain activities. MIAA charges broadcast fees for um, some programs, in particular playoffs. So unless there's, you know, unless we have fundraising to do that, it'll be challenging. Um, but I sent the proposal to Mr. Bernard. He as he usually does, jumped on it right away. We're over the weekend with emailing, and Mr. Bernard, perhaps you want to update on what the yeah, steps are? Yeah, just no. So I, I, I think it was it was an interesting proposal, and so um, we've set a meeting. I've set a meeting up with Rob Carboni, whom some of you know from NORCAM, for uh, July 5th. He's going to come to my office. I had some suggestions to the proposal, some things that I thought might we might want to um, tweak a little bit in terms of when the meetings, the informational meetings would be held, um, I suggested that we involve the middle school as well because we have a pretty vibrant video production program um, there and, and I think it would be, you know, it also opens up possibilities for more people to participate. So I think there's some potential 
for something good to come of this. So we'll be, we'll be working on it starting in July. Yeah. I mean, they seemed very open to whomever it was, whether it's parents or students. They just thought that students, you know, may be interested. They said they yeah. could support, you know, community hours, uh, service hours for mm -hmm. people that you know, are willing to do that. Um, yeah. But, you know, they want to put more programming on from, you know, from athletics or other events that, that happened at the high school. And so um, I thought that was encouraged. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> Definitely resulted in some budding broadcasters. Yes, I mean it's it's it's, it's good. It's good that um, they want to get involved. Yeah. Okay. Subcommittee schedule policy subcommittee <clears throat> sounds like they're a little bit later risers than uh, the previous the <clears throat> previous uh, group. It's but not about rising. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Eight thirty a.m. on Tuesday, July seventeenth. Um, administrative report, Mr. Bernard. Chairman, I do. Um, so there's a few things, and I left you all a little packet, right? You all have that? Yeah. Um, Why was this in the packet, too, by the way? I'll get to that. Okay. At the end of your report. Right here. There we go. Did you not see this? The big yellow? <laughs> the, no, I didn't. <laughs> so uh, I thought it, a little shout out to um, the cast and crew of the Bachelor School's performance of Giants in the Sky. Um, they were, the fourth and fifth graders did a really nice yeah, job. I, you know, I, 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 I think, did you go on Friday? Yes. Yeah, I went on Friday night. I know I'm biased, but I was blown away. I, I thought it was really, <laughs> it was great. And I know, Michael, you went on Saturday, yeah. right? The, the students did a really Imagine great job. that many fourth and fifth graders together. Yeah. And even the ones, like, in the background were engaged with each other and the whole acting, like, not They had such fun with each other, and there was a, really? some really nice messages in that in that play. And um, questioning whether it was truly fourth and fifth graders. Yeah, yeah, it was really good, and it was a it was a good crowd Friday night. Um, did you have a good crowd Saturday? Yeah, it was, it was a good crowd, crowd Saturday. Saturday yeah. yeah, almost every seat. And, and so I just I felt it was worth acknowledging that mm -hmm. the, the students, um, their teachers, Mrs. Dye and, and and Mrs. Larson from the music department, Mrs. Shaw from the art department that helped with the um, the scenery and all. They did a really really nice job. So I just I thought it was nice to mention. And uh, Mr. Lepret mentioned a little bit earlier in his presentation to you all, but I, I didn't want to um, overlook the, the, the high school's um, athletic program being the uh, recipient of the, of the Highland Trophy for the fourth consecutive year. It's really a very nice honor. And um, today, as, as Mr. Lepret, I just noticed I have a typo there, sorry, trophy. Um, Mr. Lepret uh, mentioned that we had a photo taken um, at the high school um, this morning with uh, a lot of the student athletes and some coaches and some pretty, um, I'll say, avid and rabid fans uh, <laughs> attended as well. So it, was, it's, it should, be a, should be a nice photo uh, in the paper on Thursday. So congratulations to the students because I think it's one of those things that really, you know, brings together the, the um, athletic performance, but it brings together the sportsmanship and along with the, um, the academics through uh, GPAs of our students. It, it's, it was a nice, a nice honor and to get it four years in a row is pretty special. A nice honor and a, nice, and a really great achievement. In a, in a great what? A great achievement. Yeah, a great achievement. I agree. It really is. So, um, so congratulations to, to the all. Um, I attached for you, so we're, we're making some very good progress with the, with the NRPS app. So from my prior presentation to you, uh, and again, I really need to thank um, now going after tomorrow will be a senior uh, at the high school, Michael, Ty Michael Tyrell, whose last day is a junior tomorrow has been working very closely with, um, with Dr. Downs and me and has done some really nice work. So what you're seeing in the screenshots is what each of the, the apps for those, the pages for those schools under the app will look like. So I think with my last presentation, I think the plus portals and the lunch menus were some of the suggested buttons to be on those pages. So what we're looking to do is, um, there's a, it's, we, we are ready right now to roll the app out, but it's only for an Android device. There's a little bit, there's a couple of extra hoops we have to go through in order to have it be compatible with a, uh, an Apple device. So we anticipate that being resolved fairly soon, and we're going to be looking to roll this out in July, kind of a soft rollout, to um, have people play around with and, and give us feedback on with the idea that in August we would, we would be up and running and ready for its use um, for the new school year. And can I ask one question? Sure. What's the anonymous tip? So. That's working through the um, my school safety committee. There's going to be a, some sort of a resource that we have to um, report incidents of concern. Um, what the what the shape of that is right now? We're working with vendors on what might be most compatible with some of our electronic systems that we already have in place. But 
That's that's the idea behind the anonymous tip. And where does that go to? It would go to the police department. And then lastly, um, in, as, as has been the case in prior years, um, the district was invited to participate um, in the administration of the NAEP, what's commonly referred to as the NAEP test, the National Assessment of Educational Progress, and the two schools being invited to participate for next year are, are the Hood and the Batchelder schools. When I was the high school principal, um, the high school had participated one year. So this basically is a cross-section of schools of all grade levels in the state that participate in um, the administration of the NAEP, and it is um, voluntary for students. Um, it's not voluntary for school participation, district participation, but um, students will be identified. It's not entire grades of students or entire classes of students. It's um, selected. We provide a database of student names, and they get selected to, um, to participate if they wish. Um, so that's coming in. Uh, it looks like it's going to be January of 2019. Um, so I thought you should be aware that that was, that was happening. And what that data is used um, for largely is to um, kind of, I said, you know, kind of assess Massachusetts's overall performance as a state in terms of its educational system. And I attached for you a copy of the letter that I received from you know, our new Commissioner of Education um, late in May. The interesting thing about that test is um, it's used to compare the United States globally. Um, and what they've done over the last several years is that they've, they've actually broken out Massachusetts as if, as if it's a separate country, and they compare Massachusetts to other countries throughout the world. Correct. Because of the performance of uh, our students on these tests and the education it's usually in general. Very high right. Performance usually Massachusetts very was good. like, I think there might have been one, like Finland might have been higher performing than mm -hmm. that was the only country that exceeded Massachusetts uh, education performance. I think it's valuable for us to, to participate. Yeah. And in my superintendent's report to you, I had at the bottom and highlighted for you a reference to the goals. Oh, I thought the uh, highlight means we are not supposed to read that. Oh, I'm sorry. oh no, I wasn't. I wasn't singling anyone. Anyway. Um, so I provided for you the current school committee goals, just for you to have. Is they're they're posted on the website, but I thought this would be easier for you to have a hard copy. So if you just would be looking at these um, as we lead up to the workshop on July 19th, my plan is to do a similar exercise that we did last year, kind of a live document so we'll make some edits and some adjustments to the goals that you folks um, have for yourselves for the coming year any correspondence I have no correspondence mr. chairman all right future business the uh, school committee goals workshop you just mentioned is on July 19th at 430 in the superintendent's conference room it's a very well attended event and then the regular meeting afterwards at 630 on August 27th, if we don't finish the workshop, we will uh, reconvene at 4.30 in the superintendent's conference room again. <clears throat> and on August 27th, the regular meeting will follow. Anybody else have anything else? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I will move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Bring the hammer down.